And a very pleasant good evening, everyone, from Cambria Friesland High School. DailyDodge.com presents the high school football game of the week. And tonight, it's a battle in the Trailways Small Conference. Two teams fighting for their playoff lives. The Cambria Friesland Hilltoppers getting set to host the Rebels of Fall River, Rio. Partner Tim Haldeman. Justin Wilski is our engineer slash videographer on site for this ball game. And our video stream sponsor tonight is Farmers and Merchants Union Bank. Tonight's game is also brought to you by Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Kevin Carnine, your American family insurance agent. Beaverdam Community Hospital. Air Care and Columbus Family Dental. Welcome into the broadcast on this cold and blustery night for high school football and as I mentioned at the outset Tim Haldeman two teams that are clinging to playoff hopes it's very simple both teams are three and four overall Cambria Friesland right now coming into tonight's game is sitting at one and two in the conference so it's very simple Cambria Friesland wins its last two games they're in the postseason for Fall River Rio also three and four. They're now at one and three in the conference. This is their final conference game. They have to win out. If they do that, it's not a guarantee that they're in, but as we've seen in the past, there are certain teams, even with under 500 conference records, that get into the postseason. So Fall River and Rio need to win out and then hope that they can get in the postseason. Well, good explanation, Mike. And uh, all we have to do is go back one week to uh, a game that I'm, I'm hoping that you folks had an opportunity to listen to. And if you didn't listen to it and watch it live, I hope you had an opportunity during the week to watch it. And uh, what I'm referring to is the Columbus victory over Lodi. Mike, that was as they were playing for their playoff lives, you know, with three games to go during the regular season, they're done. They were done for the year right then and there. Well, guess what? They came up against a really good Lodi team, and, upset and, special, and uh, brought their game to the uh, to the hilt, and uh, and upset one of the best teams in the state of Wisconsin. Now, uh, these two clubs are going to have to elevate their games tonight, and uh, we'll see which one can elevate the highest. You and I had a chance to watch Fall River Rio take on Johnson Creek a couple of weeks ago. Uh, Johnson Creek won the game, but what I remember about that is after a slow start, the Rebels really outplayed Johnson Creek in the second half, and they made it rather interesting. So they've shown here in year one of this new co-op that, you know, if they elevate their game, as you're saying, they show they can play with anybody. Well, uh, Cody Schultz is at the helm in his first year. Yep. You know Cody Schultz. I know Cody Schultz. And uh, we, we know what kind of a competitor he is. And and uh, he's going to uh, elevate these kids and, and bring out some good in, in this group of young people. And, and they've got, uh, you know, a couple more games underneath their belt than what they've had. And, and uh, yeah, they're, they're just going to get better. Now, that particular night uh, over in Rio, the weather conditions were not very good. And they were up against one of the best players well, in the state. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Justin goodness. Swanson, yeah. That young man from... Uh, Johnson Creek. Matter of fact, I had a discussion with uh, Johnson Creek's coach, Tim Wagner, who is a very, very good friend of mine. And uh, and I told him, and I somewhere, I'm not going to tell you that it's going to be Division One, and I'm not going to tell you that he's going to be a quarterback even in Division Three. But he is going to play football somewhere at the next level. Number one, you can tell that he thoroughly enjoys the game of football. And number two, the kids just got great quickness and instinct for the game of football. And when you come from a small town like Johnson Creek, you know, it's not the easiest thing in the world to get noticed. But uh, nowadays, with uh, the media as it is, hey, if you're pretty good, they're going to find you, you know. And if you don't believe that the media has an impact in uh, this world today, just turn on MSNBC or Fox News. All right, Mike? I get what you're saying. <laughs> we don't want to go down that road right now, do we? <laughs> that's, that's for another, that's for our post game that's tonight. Exactly. <laughs> but uh, anyway, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's fun to see these, small, these kids from the small towns. 
that uh, are, uh, are talented athletes and uh, become leaders on their team and then go on to, uh, you know, hey, maybe it's a Whitewater, maybe it's a Bull Lake College or a Ripon College or a St. Norbert's or, a, uh, you know, a, a smaller school, you know. And, and, and man, you can uh, have four or five years of uh, additional football and then, and then come back and then coach the game after having been instructed the game to at the next level and that's why you're seeing wisconsin foot which is in the state of wisconsin in the uh, in the small college level i just saw i just happened to get my uh, alumni magazine from uh, uw platteville i uh, graduated of course back a, a couple years ago and a uh, young fella from uh, uw platteville uh, just caught a touchdown pass from drew Brees. Did you happen to see that? I heard about it. I did not. Okay. I, I didn't know that until I got my uh, alumni uh, newsletter the other day, and I thought that was really pretty cool. Like I said, hey, if you're good, they're going to find you today. Well, we were talking about uh, Cody Schultz in his first year with Fall River Rio. Uh, Jim Bilesma is now in his 37th year as the head coach here at Cambria Friesland, and what a run it has been for him and a lot of his longtime assistants. Uh, Cambria Friesland comes into this game, though, Tim. They're hurting, literally. They have been uh, suffered. They have suffered numerous injuries here. Uh, probably the biggest one would be their starting quarterback, Joe Pulver. He was lost for the season uh, back in uh, a couple of weeks ago. Since the uh, John in the Johnson Creek game, as a matter of fact, it was. Uh, he was lost for the season with a torn rotator cuff and a torn labrum. So Joe Pulver. Uh, not going to be, uh, obviously, on the field tonight. Uh, there were also a couple of linemen that have been out since week one that are just coming back in this game tonight. And so it's pretty remarkable that with all the injuries they've had, they're still playing meaningful football here at this juncture. Uh, you probably saw the parents were being introduced here a few moments ago. And now we'll pause for the national. Our national anthem here at Cambria Friesen. Let's give you the starting lineups for this game. First, the defensive starters for the Fall River Rio Rebels. At defensive end, Gavin Woodhill, a sophomore at 6'1", 200 pounds. The other end is Dakota Johnson, a 6'1", 180-pound senior. Defensive tackles are Bryce Locke, a 6'1", 215-pound -pound junior. And Colton Pergandy, a sophomore at 5'7", 171. Linebackers for the Rebels. On the inside, Nick Larson, a 5'8", 165-pound senior. The Sam linebackers, Jacob Rowe, a 6'4", 190-pound junior. And the Will linebackers, Tegan Prock, now a senior at 5'10", 195. Cornerbacks are Christian Perez, a 5'9", 140-pound junior. And Sam Osterhaus, a junior at 5'10", 140. The safety is Carson Richardson. He is a 5'11", 160-pound senior. Those are the defensive starters tonight for the Rebels. Now the offensive starters for the Cambria Friesland Hilltoppers. Looking at the uh, offensive line, the left tackle is Derek Schumacher, a senior at 5'7", 200. The left guard, Joey Seitz, 5'7", 170-pound senior. At center is Austin Broxma, junior at 5'11", 165. Right guard, Aiden Knutson, a senior at 6'2", 260. 
And the uh, right tackle is Murphy Newbrow Guard, a junior at six foot five inches and 190 pounds. Looking at the backs and receivers, the quarterback is Kobe Smith. He is a six foot one inch, 155 pound junior. Running backs include Cade Bermania, a five foot nine inch, 140 pound junior. Max Raymond, a senior at 5'10", 170. And Max Papp, a senior at 5'8", 150. Wide receivers include Griffin Hart, a junior at 6 feet 5", 185. And Mason Owen, a 6 foot 1 inch, 190 pound senior. Those are your offensive starters for the Hilltoppers. And uh, we'll be underway momentarily. I mentioned right before the anthem, it's, uh, there's a lot of things green that uh, the parents were being introduced before the start of the game. It's also senior night tonight here at Cambria Friesland High School, being the last regular season home game. So uh, the is seniors... It, is it a homecoming? Uh, that, I don't think so. <laughs> but but they're having a, uh, a, a brat bash over behind us here in the Park Pavilion right. uh, to uh, uh, have some... Uh, some goodies. There's there there's brats. There's burgers. There's uh, right. uh, like a bake, almost like a bake sale. Right. Right? Lots of well, goodies. And we'll bars. find out when they uh, tell us who won the tug of war, and if the freshman <laughs> girls win it again, well, something's you're, rigged. You're, you're thinking Marquezan. Yeah, we <laughs> we uh, we hit the Marquezan homecoming a couple of weeks ago, and uh, I uh, I did a double take when they announced that the freshman girls had won the tug of war. <laughs> I said, boy, you don't want to mess with those. No those three. girls do. Don't mess with them. And we're going back to Marquezan next week, uh, I understand. Yes, next week. Yep. The Marquezan uh, Hornets. Uh, that, in fact, I ran into Marquezan, the entire team last night, and Coach John Dunleavy, my wife and I went out to dinner up in Wapan. We ran into the team. They, they were having a team dinner. They don't have a game this week. Did they you go scheduled. to that pizza joint up there? We did. Oh, they were, you're killing me. Uh, and so oh, God. We ran into them, and uh, they don't have a game this week. They were scheduled to play Sturgeon Bay. But Sturgeon Bay, right before the season started, had to go down to eight-man football. So they decided to go out for a team bonding dinner, and I told Coach Dunleavy, I said, we got your game next week. He goes, that's a done deal? I said, it's a done deal. So, yep, next Friday night we're in Marquezan to watch them battle Partyville in the regular Ooh, season good game. finale. Yeah, it should be a fun one, yeah. and that's a 7 o'clock kick next Friday night. Friesland, it's Fall River Rio. It's Mike Tronson and Tim Haldeman with you alongside Justin Wilski, our videographer engineer. And Cambria Friesen will receive the opening kickoff. The Rebels will have to kick to start this game tonight. And Christian Perez will do the kicking honors for the Rebels. You see the Fall River Rio team in white jerseys and pants tonight with black numbers, black and red trim. Meanwhile, the Hilltoppers in their traditional home uniforms, the red jerseys, the black pants, white numbers and trim. And here we go on a blustery night, the penultimate week of the high school football season. Ooh, you've been studying. I did. I rehearsed that. Here's the approach by Perez. And a short kick fielded. And taking up the left sideline to the 45. And still on his feet out near the 50-yard line on the return for Cambria Friesland was Mason Owen. It was a short kick to begin with. Owen takes it at around the 25 and brings it out all the way to the 45-yard line. So very good starting field position for the Hilltoppers tonight. They'll have it first and 10 on their own 45-yard line. And as you see in your screen, Cambria Friesland going right to left as we view it here in the first quarter of play. And if you hear us on occasion go, whoa, like that, well, that's our tower that is swaying just a bit tonight, yeah. folks. The breeze is really rocking here in Cambria. They motion him in, and he'll take the handoff on first and 10 to the left side, 50, 45, 40, and still oh. on his feet. Smith's on the carry. He was the motion man, and I thought maybe he might have stepped out of bounds, but uh, there's no, no, he didn't. There, there is no might about it, Mike. You can watch it on the video screen, folks. Uh, yeah, he stepped out of bounds. <laughs> but there is no doubt about it. If they were to go to re replay on that one, they don't even have to go to New York because he definitely stepped out of bounds. Well, they mark it at around the 12-yard line. Yeah, he went out of bounds at about the uh, about right about the 30. 43 but yards on the run to set up a first and goal. 
So here's Smith under center on this first and or a first and ten, I should say, from the 12. They hand it off. This is Raymond, and he cuts inside the 10 down to about the uh, six, maybe. Let's see. On the carry that time was Max Raymond, five foot ten inch, 170 pound senior. Raymond on the season leading the team in rushing yards, 701 rushing yards, and he has eight touchdowns to his credit coming into the game today. And by the way, folks, we have a really, really good look. If you're watching it on the uh, video, you can tell because we're looking right down on the field here. Gain of about seven to the five-yard line where it's second down and about three. So they can get inside the two, and they give it to Raymond. Cut back as he went right side, dives towards the goal, and he's in for the touchdown. Number nine on the season. And we are not even a minute and a half into the game. It's already 6 nothing in favor of Cambria Friesland. Wow, that didn't take long. So Raymond from the Hilltoppers, the early lead. 62 yards and three plays. Think they're fired up for this game? Yeah, I would wow. say, yeah. And the Hilltoppers will go for two. They'll put two receivers to left side on the conversion try and the handoff, and that's going to be stopped short. That was Max Papp, the ball carrier, and he could not get in. So 10.47 to go in the first quarter. It's 6-0 Cambria Friesland leading Fall River Rio. We're back right after this on DailyDodge.com. Are you looking for that long-term relationship? Are you looking for someone who cares? This is Randy Bubbles, President and CEO of Farmers and Merchants Union Bank. We do care and we strive for that long-term relationship. Banking, that is. Community banking is all about supporting you, as well as the communities we live in. Our team at Farmers and Merchants Union Bank live in the same neighborhoods as you, we drive on the same streets, our kids share the same schools and play at the same parks. We take your financial needs seriously and help you find a solution no matter how simple or complex. We know you, you know us, no gimmicks. Just common sense banking with all the technology advances you have come to expect with a twist, someone to talk to. We like long-term relationships and we do care. Farmers and Merchants Union Bank, stop in to see us. Columbus, Fall River, Friesland, Juno, and Rio. Eco Housing Lender, member FDIC. So here we go, pile for it. Let's see who's, I think Fall River Rio has it, but it was a uh, a short ground ball. It was fielded by Gavin Grams of the Rebels who then fumbled it as he was going down, but uh, he recovered. And it'll be Rebels football on their own 40 yard line. We are not even a minute and a half into this game. 10.42 to go first quarter. And if you're just joining us, you've already missed a touchdown. It's 6 nothing in favor of Cambria Friesland after a five-yard touchdown run by Max Raymond. By the way, my recap, Mike, I, I apologize. I added a couple plays together. It was 56 yards in three plays for the score for the Hilltoppers. On first and 10 for the Rebels. They'll keep it on the ground. Running off the left side, this is Larson. He's to the left side. All the way inside the 40, down near the 30 of Cambria Friesen before being pushed out of bounds. Well, boy, it's not going to take long for uh, the Rebels to answer, apparently, as they get a big run by Nick Larson on the first play from scrimmage, taking it all the way from his own 40. 29 down, yards in the carry. Yep, down this, to the 31. Th this appears like it's eight-man football, Mike. <laughs> My goodness. That's what it looks like to me. What do we got? We got a penalty in the play? What do we got? Referees are uh, meeting at the 50-yard line, and the, the first question, pepperoni or sausage. <laughs> <laughs> That's always the first one. Right? Well, true. No, no, we're going to play. I'm not sure what the discussion was no about. I have no idea what that was for. But we play on. Oh, the, he just did pick. Oh, I know. It's sideline warning. On the other, That happens oftentimes early in these ball games when these kids just get too excited and they get too close to the field. And the coaches on occasion. On occasion? <laughs> okay. First and 10 for the Rebels from the Hilltopper 31-yard line. Quarterback Carson Richardson ducks under center, backs in the eye. They motion a man. And now he'll set. And the give is to Tegan Proctnow, and he will be taken down 
at around the 29-yard line. Nice tackle made on the play there by Murphy Newbrow Guard, a junior. He is the one of the defensive ends. And we are now just over two minutes into the first quarter. It is a gain of about three on that last play. So we'll call it second and seven for the Rebels from the Hilltopper 28. And Richardson takes uh -oh. the snap. Yeah, and that's, that's going to cost that him five. Dead. Looks like procedure will be the call here. And that's exactly what it is. Five-yard penalty on the Rebels will turn second and seven into second and 12 and they'll put the ball back at the 33 yard line glad to have you with us tonight on dailydodge.com hard to believe it's week eight cambria Friesen getting off to a tremendously fast start and the rebels trying to answer almost as quickly here with a second and 12 now from the hilltopper 33 grams in motion now and just goes to the left side, tried to turn the corner and uh, picked up a couple. Looks like he's going to get about two, maybe three on the play. It's going to sit up third down in about ten. We saw that a couple of weeks ago, Tim. Uh, that where was Larson, you said? That was Larson, yeah. Where They did that several weeks ago against Johnson Creek where they would, instead of Richardson lining up at the quarterback, they would, uh, they would put Larson in there. Was that, I guess it was that like a wildcat, I guess? Or well, a it's, bit? it's a yeah. wildcat from a T yeah, formation. From a exactly. Now he's under center again. So Larson under center again. We're going to have to keep an eye on that tonight. And he's going to keep it. Runs to the right side. Breaks the tackle. And he's down inside the 20, 15, 10, 5, Ooh. and fumbles the ball into the end zone. Oh, he was, was, he he was down? down. Yeah, they, they called him down. Most definitely. He's going to be down... Uh, uh, right about the one-yard line, maybe just inside the two. We'll see where they mark it here. But he Eight. was definitely down. And they're going to mark him at about the two, it looks like, Tim. That's a 28-yard yep. gain by Larson. He's got a 29-yarder and a 28-yarder. So he's got three carries oh. for 59 yards. Well, wow, both these teams early on here in this game getting yardage in big chunks. Well, and right know, now it's you first notice, and goal. You notice there aren't any cheerleaders that are that are yelling, come on, give me a D, give me an E, <laughs> give me an F. You get it? I That's get it. That's why. Okay. First and goal from the two. Larson takes the snap. He'll keep it and pushes his way towards the goal line. He did not get in, though. He's second and goal from the one. <sighs> 60 yards gain and four carries. His average just went down considerably after that last carry. Larson again under center on second and goal for the Rebels from the one-yard line. Takes the snap, just dives, and he is yep, he's in. in for the touchdown. So the Rebels have tied this game with 7.24 to go in the first quarter. A one-yard plunge for Nick Larson, and they've got a chance to take the lead on the conversion try. 64 yards on the drive. It uh, took them, let's see here. One, two, three, four, five, six plays, all uh, coming on the ground. Took them, uh, well, about uh, three and a half minutes. And we've got a whistle and a timeout. Mike we called do. by Fall River Rio. So a timeout with 724 remaining in the opening stanza here at Cambria Friesland High School. Our score as of right now is Cambria Friesland 6, Fall River Rio 6. But again, after the timeout, it's a conversion try and a chance for the Rebels to take the lead. And I look down below me here, Mike, at the uh, Cambria Friesland band and the uh, instructor, the band leader, the band director. did not get the weather report. <laughs> <laughs> What what he, makes you say that? Because he's he does he's not dressed for the occasion. Oh my goodness. He looks like he's inside of a basketball game. He just has a sport coat on. He has more hot air than the brass section here tonight is you, my oh, friend. That's, easy, uh, come easy, on now. Easy. Come on now. All right, after the timeout, the Rebels will attempt the extra point. And this is Proc now to hold. 
and Christian Perez will do the kicking honors to try and give his team lead. Kick is up, plenty of leg, and it is good. So 7.24 to go first quarter. It's now 7-6, to six, Fall River Rio leading Cambria Friesland. We're back after this on DailyDodge.com. At Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Beaver Dam, we are a second-generation, family-owned business that has been in the Beaver Dam community for over 25 years. Our goal is to make the process of buying a vehicle fun again. No pressure, no hassle, just quality customer service from our friendly and experienced sales staff. So give us an opportunity the next time you're in the market for a new or pre-owned vehicle. The worst that can happen is we shake hands and part as friends, and if you catch us on the right day, you can enjoy one of Mom's amazing homemade cookies. Let our family take care of your family at Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram and Beaver Dam. Look around. This book, this meal, this lamp, this world is made of dreams. So when people say American Family Insurance protects things, we shake our head no. Because we protect this, and everyone's dream is worth protecting. Insure carefully, dream fearlessly. American Family Insurance. Yes, I'm a dreamer. Contact the Kevin Carnine Agency, LLC, at 920-887-9700 in Beaver Dam today. American Family Mutual Insurance Company, SI, and its operating company, 6000 American Parkway, Madison, Wisconsin. 6th rushing touchdown of the year. Another ground ball kick on the ensuing kickoff fielded at the 30-yard line. And coming to the left side and getting taken down at around the 35 on the return that time for the Rebels was Gavin Woodall. And it's a return of only about 5-6 yards. They'll mark it, let's see, right at the 35 apparently. So that's where the Rebels will start first, or the uh, Hilltoppers rather, I should, I beg your pardon. Th that was actually There's Joey uh, Sites, I Joey your, Sites I on the return roster, yeah. there. And uh, I'll tell you, when a guy with a number of 56 gets his hands on the football, it's always fun to watch, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is. <laughs> Anyways, first and 10 for the Hilltoppers from their own 35. Sorry, Joey Sites there. And they hand off to Raymond as he goes right side. A little cutback as he pushes his way forward. Lost the ball. It's out. The ball was out, and the Rebels have it. It was recovered on the play by Tegan Prock now. So Raymond with the fumble on that first down run, and the Rebels are going to take it over. You know, one of the things we, I talked about with head coach Jim Bilesma on Wednesday night, uh, he said one of the things that have really hurt Cambria Friesen this year, very, very slow starts. Well, they started very, very quickly tonight. They scored the first touchdown of the game, uh, but then they give up that quick touchdown to the Rebels and now losing it on a fumble. We'll see if the defense can come up with a big stand here. First and 10, Rebels on the Hilltopper 40-yard line. Graham's in motion, backs in the eye. This is Larson under center, just takes it and runs with it to the left side, and he will not sack. Boy, there were about four, five, six red jerseys that all got there. And they're going to mark this back at the 44-yard line, so it's going to be a loss of close to four on the play. And a second and 14 coming up for the Rebels with 6.40 and counting left in the opening stands. A 7-6, to six, Fall River Rio leads Cambria Friesland. Well, it's not very hard, Mike, to figure out that uh, Nick Larson is going to be the focal point for yep. uh, Rio Fall River here tonight. And, and uh, you know, it's just going to be a, a lot of student body Larson right and left. And on second and 14, Larson. Keeping it again, and straight ahead running, breaks the tackle, gets inside the 40, down near the 36-yard line before he gets tackled on the play. So he got I'm a good chunk of yardage back. I'm going to yep. give him seven. Seven-yard pickup. It will bring down, or bring, it, bring us to a third and seven, I should say. Ball now at the... 30, about the 36. Graham's in motion to the right now. He's going to set. And back to throw is Richardson on the run this time. Now he does throw on the run. It's out of bounds. Incomplete. So that time they did put Richardson under center because they wanted to throw. You, you think that tips the defense? No. In, in a lot of small towns... 
a trick play is called a pass. A pass, right. Yeah. And, and I'll tell you what, tonight, just with the conditions as it is, you know, you, you cannot simulate cold weather in practice. You can't do it. And uh, I don't care if these kids have grown up in Wisconsin or not. It doesn't make any difference. It's cold out there tonight, it folks. Yeah. And, I mean, when you're playing with cold hands for the first time since a year ago, it's, it's hard. Richardson under center on fourth and seven for the Rebels from the 37 of Cambria Friesen. They go for it, four down territory. Richardson Ooh. had nobody to throw it to. Ends up going to the left side, then just stepping out of bounds. He had to avoid a tackler along the way, but there was just nobody there to throw the ball to. And so the ball is going to go over on downs, and that's huge. That is huge for the Hilltoppers' defense after losing the ball on a fumble to come up with a big stand and get it right back. You're only down one with 5.22 to go in the opening quarter. It's 7-6, to six, Fall River Rio leading Cambria Friesland. <clears throat> and now the Hilltoppers with the ball right back. First and 10 from their own 37. And on first down, Smith, the quarterback, Whoa. wants to throw across the middle, and it is incomplete. Looks like he wanted to hit Mason Owen, but it was out of his reach, and there were a couple of white jerseys out there, including... Carson Richardson, the safety, it's incomplete. And second and ten coming up. Kobe Smith took over as quarterbacking with Kobe's dad, Derek, uh, down by the by the uh, pavilion before the game tonight. And, I think uh, his season's coming up His quick, season is it? coming yeah. up. His, yes, I'll see is. him up close and personal. Do you tell him hi from me in case uh, I make a bad call? And on second down, they hand it off, and coming to the near side, Bermania, he's to the 40, 45, 50, cut back, 45, 40, still on his feet, now finally brought down near the 35-yard line of the Rebels. Bermania with a big run, finally tackled by Sam Osterhaus, but the junior, Cade Bermania, giving a big jolt to that Hilltoppers offense. 26 yards in the game. He's He's got two carries for 69 yards on the night. First and 10 now for the Hilltoppers at the Rebel 36-yard line. They motion a man. That's Bermania, and the give is to Raymond. Right side, 30. Breaks the tackle, 25-20. Cutback. He could go. 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Cambria Friesland. 36 yards on the run for Max Raymond. That is his second TD of this game. And it's 12 to 7 Hilltoppers with 4.44 to go in the first. Four carries of the night for Maximus Raymond for 53 yards. And uh, I'll tell you, him and uh, Nick Larson are going to have a real uh, battle for uh, leading ball carrier here tonight. Wow. <laughs> and now the conversion try. Cambria will go for two. And then, well, dropped. It was uh, grabbed by Christian Perez, and then he dropped it. So the conversion try fails. 4.44 to go in the first quarter. It's now 12-7 in favor of Cambria Friesland. We're back after this on DailyDodge.com. With today's busy schedules, you need banking solutions that are available when you need them to be. This is Tara Ninman, Marketing Manager with Farmers and Merchants Union Bank. We understand you want to bank when and where it's most convenient for you, and we've updated many of our digital banking products to make it even easier for you to bank with us. Our redesigned website is easier to view on mobile devices and has a clean, modern look. Our mobile app and online banking platforms have also been updated and include convenience features like mobile device fingerprint login, person-to-person -person payments, optional email and text alert notifications, and transfer of funds from our bank to another bank. Our business banking has also been updated with a new online business banking platform and business mobile app. Check it all out at fmub.bank. Farmers and Merchants Union Bank, Columbus, Fall River, Friesland, Juneau, and Rio. Equal housing lender, member FDIC. Back to action. The ball at the 24 on the kickoff. Oh, oh what a hit. Ouch. Oh, my goodness. The ball was fielded 
by Zach Marquardt of the Rebels and Mason Owen of Cambria Friesland laid a haymaker on him as he picked up the football. It's going to be first and 10 for the Rebels right at their own 25-yard line, but Marquardt took a vicious hit from Owen. That's a great way to get uh, warmed up in a real hurry. Well, I guess so. Yeah. Ouch. First and 10 for the Rebels, who now trail 12-7. to With We still have 4.41 to go in the first quarter, <laughs> folks. Graham's in motion to the near side, now sets, and this is Larson, who took the snap, and he can't turn the corner on the left side. He's brought down over on that far side as he was tackled by, that was Raymond on the tackle. Griffin Hart was there as well. We're going to give him a uh, loss of one. Um, well, We'll just call it no gain. So no gain, all right. It, it's a, a very, very small loss, but we'll just Upon call further it. review. Second and a, a, a long 10 or a short 11. You can take your pick as we approach the four-minute mark and counting. Ball just shy of the 25. And under center, that was Richardson with a toss to the near side. This is Tegan Prochnow, and Prochnow gets taken down. Good defense again by Cambria Friesland. Junior Ocampo Ramirez was there. He had some help from his friends, and it's a gain of only one for Tegan Prock now, the fullback who took that carry, and it will be third down and nine for the Rebels. 3.32 and counting left in the opening quarter, and on the scoreboard, it's Cambria Friesland 12, Fall River Rio 7. Tegan has a lot of red shirts out there. There's no way that they got a hat on a hat and uh, we're making blocks out there. So credit the uh, Hilltopper defense for some really good pursuit. Third and nine for the Rebels from their own 26-yard line. Oh, we got a whistle. And we do. And it's a, we have a timeout? Yep. Yep. Timeout has been called by the Rebels with 3.08 to play in the first quarter. If you're just joining us, you've missed quite a bit. <laughs> As uh, Cambria Friesland got on the board a minute and 13 seconds into the contest when Max Raymond took it in from five yards out. A two-point conversion failed. It was 6 nothing Hilltoppers. Then a couple of minutes later with 7.24 to go in the first quarter, a one-yard touchdown run for Nick Larson of Fall River Rio put them on the board. In fact, they took the lead 7-6 to six after the extra point was tacked on by Perez. Oh, but just a couple minutes after that, just a few moments ago, Max Raymond with his second touchdown of the evening. This one, a 36-yard scamper. Two-point conversion failed, but the Hilltoppers now lead it by the count of 12-7. to seven. Max Raymond now in double digits on the year with 10 rushing touchdowns. I mentioned he came into the game a bit, the, the leading rush on this team by far, uh, over 700 yards. All right, third and nine after the timeout for the Rebels on their own 26. And that's Rowe in motion. Richardson under center. He's going to go to the left side, Ooh. and he will get sacked. Red jerseys everywhere. Leading the charge was up fourth and long in a punting situation for the Rebels. They're going to mark the ball all the way back at about the 19-yard line, so a loss of almost seven on that play. Sites got in there, and so did half of his <laughs> half of his friend, teammates. I tell you, it was that was something. Great swarming defense by the Hilltoppers. Bermania is back to receive the punt from Perez. Perez has the snap, gets the kick away, wobbly end over end kick. It's going to take a rebel bounce and be fielded by Bermania. But he got it back. He he bobbled it. He got hit as he bobbled it. He was hit by Javian Olds, a freshman for the Rebels. And he was lucky, Bermania, that he didn't lose that football. Somehow he hung on. He actually bobbled it and kind of tipped it back to himself. And that's a break as the Hilltoppers will have it first and 10 on their own 49-yard line with 2.17 to go now in the opening quarter of play. From our vantage point, we get to look right down onto the uh – Cambria Friesland bench, and I'm a little surprised that he hasn't been approached by a coach yet, <laughs> as we've got a timeout called on the field 
by Cambria Friesland, but uh, that that is a play right there that would not be recommended by any coach because he first touched that ball out near the hash mark, maybe a step or two towards the sideline from the hash mark. He was probably what a six, seven, eight yards away from the uh, the boundary. You know, if you're right next to the boundary, okay, fine. You know, you can. Uh, he might want to take up baseball and be the next shortstop, though, <laughs> because he he did end up fielding the ball somehow. Yeah, he did. I don't know how, but he did it. A lot of entertainment already in this game, and we're not even to the end of the first quarter. The folks have already got their four dollars yes, worth have. of entertainment here tonight. First and ten, <laughs> Cambria Friesland Hilltoppers on their own forty-nine, leading this game by a count of twelve to seven over Fall River Rio. And they snapped it right to Raymond, 50, 45, dragging a tackler with him down to the 40 yard line. And now he gets stood up and that'll drop. <laughs> he got dropped there to, kind of late after the play was essentially over, but he bounces right back up. And that is a first down for the Hilltoppers. And on the play, it's a gain of 11, down to the 40 yard line of Fall River Rio. 64 yards gained on five carries for Maximus Raymond. These and guys are keeping me on my toes here with their direct snaps to yeah. players other than the quarterback. <laughs> and let's see, they're going to do the same thing again here. They snap it right to Raymond. This time he gets tripped up, still dives towards the 35-yard line. Picked up probably four, maybe five on the play. And it looks like that was Dakota Johnson, the defensive end in there on the stop for the uh, Rebels. They're calling it second and six after a gain of four. The ball is right around the 36-yard line. Minute 20 and counting left in this first quarter. This time Smith under center hands it right off. And that is Raymond again. Breaking tackles down inside the 25, down inside the 20 now. And before he gets taken down... Max Raymond, boy, he's got some speed, doesn't he? Yeah, he's got some quickness, no doubt. And he takes it all the way down Another to the 20-yard 20 20 yard line. 22-yard gain. It was 16, actually, from the 36 there. Yep, from the 16. The, the scoreboard was wrong. Too. Oh, thank you. 16-yard gain. 16 minus... Uh, but it was still impressive nonetheless. Yeah, 16 minus 22, so minus... First and 10. Hilltoppers on the Rebels, 20. Give is to Raymond, right side. And gets inside the 20, then gets pushed back around the 17. So it picks up a yard, maybe two. Let's see where they spot it. Yeah, about one is all he got on that play. It'll be second and nine now. Ball around the 19-yard line. And we are now under 20 seconds left in this first quarter of play. Yeah, they're going to let it run out, Mike. And they are. So that's going to take us to the end of this very entertaining first quarter of play here at Cambria Friesland High School. At the end of one tonight in Trailway Small Football Action, it is Cambria Friesland 12, Fall River Rio 7. We're back right after this on DailyDodge.com. Sports injuries, nagging aches and pains. It's frustrating when your mobility is limited, preventing you from enjoying an active life. Beaverdam Community Hospital's Institute for Movement and Orthopedics utilizes the latest surgical solutions to help you live pain-free. Their team of experts, from orthopedic surgeons to physical therapists, are in one location, collaborating to customize a plan that reclaims your quality of life. Learn how they can seamlessly maximize your mobility. Visit bdch.com backslash IMO. Air Care in Beaver Dam has been trusted by customers for over 37 years. This is Chad Guzzi, owner of Air Care, and we want to keep you happy and comfortable. From our courteous office staff to the honest and dependable technician in your home, our reliable team is working hard to provide heating and cooling solutions for you. We proudly serve the entire Dodge County area and beyond. Let us create the comfort in your home that you deserve. Call us today at 920-356-8860. We start the second quarter, Cambria Friesland with a second down and nine on the 19-yard line of Vol River Rio. And they give it to Raymond, left side, he's to the 15, he's to the 10, 
five dives, and he is in for the touchdown. 19-yard run for Raymond. He's got the hat trick. And we're only eight seconds into the, the second period. He's already got three touchdowns. Wow. Eight, eight carries on the night for 93 yards for Maximus Raymond. And then his uh, teammate, Cade Bermania, with three carries for 70. What an average. So now the conversion try. They will go for two as per usual. Smith. Out of the gun, will hand it off. That's Max Papp. And he went left side, then tried to cut back, and he could not get in. So, with 11.52 left until halftime, it's now 18-7 to in favor of Cambria Friesland. We're back after this on DailyDodge.com. Hi, this is Dr. Adam Forster at Columbus Family Dental. If you've been unhappy with your smile, it's time that you come and see us. Our team of doctors are waiting to help you get your smile back. We'll take the time to talk with you and treat you like a member of our family, not just another number. Whether it's a whole mouth makeover or simply a little tweak, we'll find the right solution that fits you. For your free, no pressure consultation, call us today at 623 5559. At Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Beaver Dam, we are a second generation family owned business that has been in the Beaver Dam community for over 25 years. Our goal is to make the process of buying a vehicle fun again. No pressure, no hassle, just quality customer service from our friendly and experienced sales staff. So give us an opportunity the next time you're in the market for a new or pre owned vehicle. The worst that can happen is we shake hands and part as friends, and if you catch us on the right day, you can enjoy one of Mom's amazing homemade cookies. Let our family take care of your family at Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Beaver Dam. And we are back to live action, and the end or end kick will be fielded at the 20-yard line and up to the 30 and getting spun down right around the 30-yard line on the return was Zach Markwart. And Raymond, for good measure, makes the tackle on special teams. We are 14 seconds into the second period of play. It's Cambria Friesland 18, Fall River Rio 7, and the Rebels have some work to do now, trailing by 11, and they have it first and 10 from their own 31 yard line. As they come up to the line, first and 10 for the Rebels. Richardson will duck under center with backs in the eye, and now they motion a man. And Richardson will hand it off. And straight ahead running and a couple of yards gained on that play. Ball carrier for the Rebels was Nick Larson. As they uncover the pile. He picked up a yard, almost two, but it'll be second and nine officially. All right now around the 33-yard line, thereabouts. Opening minute of play, second quarter. And on second and nine, Richardson again under center, surveys the defense, turns around, tosses it to Proc now. Whoa. And he will. And that was Mason Owen again getting in there to drop Proc now for a big loss of about four, almost five on the play. Well, Proc now is your fullback in the backfield. He's mm -hmm. going to get the tough yards. He's got three carries for negative one thus far. So that eh, tells you a little bit of something about the uh, big boys up front for Cambria Friesland. So Mason Owen with a great defensive play there. Third and 14 for the Rebels. Back of their own 27. A couple receivers to the left side. One to the right. Richardson back in the pocket. Wants to throw. Looking to the near side, and it is incomplete. It was out of the reach of the intended receiver, Jacob Rowe. There was pretty good coverage out there by Junior Ocampo Ramirez at cornerback. And now a fourth down situation, and the Rebels will have to kick it away with 10.20 to go until intermission. It is 18-7. The Hilltoppers on top of the Rebels. And as we said, Cambria Friesen, if they win out there tonight and next week, they will be in the postseason. 
something to keep a watchful eye on here, Mike. We are, uh, you know, almost 14 minutes into this ball game, and we have yet to have a completed pass. And here is the punt by Perez High Floater. And it's going to go out of bounds after crossing over the midfield stripe. We'll see where they spot it here. Yeah, Cambria Friesland wins tonight, and they win next week. They're in the postseason for the Fall River Rio team. They have been the best they can finish in conference is 2-3. And, and as we told you at the outset, they do occasionally take Two and three, you know, or conference uh, teams with conference records under 500, uh, and you're seeing more of that now these days, Tim, because of, you know, more teams that are having to co-op and more teams going to eight man. So the, the the field is not quite as large as it used to be. First and ten, Hilltoppers on their own 48, and they snap it back to Smith. He's going to throw out to the near side. Bermania dropped it. Boy, that was very close to being a lateral, but it wasn't. It was a forward pass, and uh, it'll be second and ten. Colby Smith, looking at some of his numbers, he came into the game tonight with 324 passing yards, a couple of passing touchdowns on the season after taking over for the injured Joe Pulver. He's actually averaging 7.5 yards per completion when he has to throw. Could not connect with Bermania, though. Second and 10 Hilltoppers from the 48-yard line. They motion Bermania. He's going to take the handoff. And he'll go to the right side. Breaks a tackle. He's to the 50. He's to the 45. Sideline 40. Breaks another tackle. 35. And he gets ushered out of bounds on the near side by Gavin Woodall. But Bermania with another nice run for the Hilltoppers. Let's see where they mark it here. They're going to put this down at the... 33-yard line. 19 yards in yep. the carry. You got it. 19 yards and a first down for the Hilltoppers. Quarter. And the <clears> toppers <throat> driving again with a couple receivers to the right side. First and 10 from the Rebel 34. Smith out of the gun. Takes the snap and gave it to Raymond right away. Raymond left side and he gets taken down. And he lost the ball. It came out. And no signal yet. We're still waiting yeah, as they, they uncovered, it. but they, they kept it. They kept it, yeah. That's a break. Well, remember, they, the, the Hilltoppers lost a fumble earlier. Lost the one on the play. And it's going to set up second and 11. Now Max Raymond, uh, nine carries on the night for 92 yards and uh, a trio of touchdowns. <clears throat> So after that loss of one, sets up second and 11 for the Hilltoppers. One receiver wide to the right on second and 11. And Smith under center. You know, counter. counter play, and they hand it off to big number 10, Carter Smiths. And Smiths on the counter takes it down to the 25. And it'll be third and two after a gain of nine on that counter. Well, that's the one that has to keep the defense honest, Mike. And and uh, when you just keep, uh, you know, filling up the uh, the defense with Max Raymond and Cade Bermania, and then all of a sudden here you've got that counter, that inside trap, and and uh, that just really makes that defense. And to the outside, and he has it. As he's down near the 20-yard line, second effort that time for Raymond, who initially got stuffed, but he bounced off. Into the outside and a second effort. He gets the first down and more as they will mark this at around the 19 yard line. That's a gain of six. And it moves the chains for the Hilltoppers as we approach the eight minute mark and counting of the second quarter. Still an 11 point lead for the Hilltoppers. They're looking to add to it on this drive. Three men, full house backfield behind Smits. He hands it off. And that is Smits again. And he gets taken down just shy of the 10. Gain of solid seven, almost eight on the play. And second and about three, a short three or a long two. Take your pick with the ball just shy of the 11-yard line. You said you uh, chatted with Derek Smits? 
Derek Smith down, yeah, down yeah. below. Is he the on the today. coaching staff for football? For, for football. No? No? Okay. For basketball, that's a different Yeah, story. yeah, yeah. I was. And the handoff. Raymond again inside the five. Another first down as Raymond is tackled by Osterhaus on the play. But it's first and goal, Cambria Friesland from the four-yard line, 7-17 left in the first half. And uh, the century mark has been broken by Max Raymond in uh, but 11 carries. As they come to the line, single receiver wide to the left. Smith under center and turns around, hands it to Raymond. Cut back straight up the middle. He goes through a hole, diving to the goal line. He falls backwards and he get in and no. Nope. About a foot short. He's mighty close, but he didn't get in. Tried to fall backwards and into the end zone. But it's a gain of three. It'll be second and goal from inside the one-yard line. Clock running as we approach the halfway point of this second quarter. And the Hilltoppers knocking on the door once again. Second and goal for the Hilltoppers from the one. Full house backfield to give to Raymond. He is into the end zone for his fourth touchdown of this game. 24-7. to seven. Hilltoppers increase the lead. And Max Raymond has four, count him four, rushing touchdowns before halftime. I think he's going for the Guinness Book of World Records for a number of touchdowns in a game, Mike. Wow. I just had a feeling he was going to get the ball in you that think? situation. <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> and they go for two. And the carry. This is Bermania. And he is in for the two-point conversion. So Bermania took the handoff. And now it's 26-7. to seven. Cambria Friesland leading Fall River Rio. 622 left in the first half. Long -term relationship? Are you looking for someone who cares? This is Randy Bubbles, President and CEO of Farmers and Merchants Union Bank. We do care and we strive for that long term relationship. Banking, that is. Community banking is all about supporting you, as well as the communities we live in. Our team at Farmers and Merchants Union Bank live in the same neighborhoods as you, we drive on the same streets, our kids share the same schools, and play at the same parks. We take your financial needs seriously and help you find a solution, no matter how simple or complex. We know you, you know us, no gimmicks. Just common sense banking with all the technology advances you have come to expect with a twist, someone to talk to. We like long-term relationships and we do care. Farmers and Merchants Union Bank, stop in to see us. Columbus, Fall River, Friesland, Juneau, and Rio. Eco Housing Lender, member FDIC. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. And as we come back to action, little drama there on the ensuing kickoff as the kickoff actually, the ball bounced past Zach Marquardt and he had to go back and pick that up. That's a live ball. The cavalry was coming and he got there and dove on it just in time. So uh, it will be Rebel football, but. Uh, the field position not quite as good as they would have hoped. They'll have it first and 10 back on around their own 13-yard line. But right now it's the Max Raymond show here at Cambria Friesland with 6.18 to go in the half. He has four touchdowns, four rushing touchdowns, and his team in front 26. <laughs> I, I know, I know. First and 10 for the Rebels on their own 13-yard line. Richardson under center. And the toss goes to Larson. Right side, trying to follow a blocker. Cut back 15. He's ahead to the 20. Ooh. Out near the 24-yard line. And then it gets taken down. Nice run by Larson there. And it looks like Griffin Hart was in there on the tackle. He got 11. He did. Hart was there. Newbrow guard was there defensively. But nice run for Larson. And he did a nice job there. He uh, Got behind his blocker, kind of let that develop a little bit, Tim, and was able to make a nice cutback and get 11. First and 10 Rebels from their own 24. This is Larson, this time under center, as they motion Grams to the near side. Larson surveying the defense, now will just keep it. He went 
Left side changed his mind, went right side, and he gets swarmed by a host of red jerseys. Holy mackerel, there were three, four, five red jerseys in there in a hurry. Carter Smith was one of them, but, boy, half the line was there as well. And that is no gain or loss on the play. We'll say no gain, all right. Uh, Nick Larson now, 11 carries for 76 yards after that no gain on uh, first and 10. Just over five minutes left in the second quarter. Second and 10, we call it, for the Rebels from their own 24. And Richardson back to throw, pressure coming. Richardson throws off his back foot to the near side, incomplete. He wanted to hit Proc now, and so was Joey Seitz. Stops the clock with 4.54 left in the second quarter on this very chilly night. Hey, it may be chilly here, but uh, be thankful we're not out in North Dakota right now Ooh. where they got about two and a half feet of snow uh, over the last 24 hours. And, uh, yeah, so it could be worse, folks. It, it could be worse. It was 65 degrees at 7 o'clock this morning. I said we should have played the game at 7 a.m. instead of 7 p.m. The thermometer dropped in a hurry. The toss, and this is pass. Larson, halfback option, and Whoa. the pass is batted down. Wow. <laughs> Griffin Hart, the He's... linebacker, he prevented that halfback option from ever getting off the ground as he batted that pass by Larson down with authority. And it's fourth and ten, and the Rebels are going to have to punt once again. Wow, what an, again, great defense. And Hart making a huge play there. Well, there's nothing that makes a defensive coach any happier than to see a young man like that listen to you, you know. Hey, if you can't get to the quarterback, what do you do? You put your hands up and you try to deflect the pass. Griffin Hart came into this game leading the Hilltoppers in tackles on the season with 46. He made a great play there. A short punt, high floater, and it's going to go out of bounds. Boy, that was not a very long punt at all. And we'll catch where they spotted here, but line of scrimmage was the 24, and it looks like they're going to mark it. Oh, my goodness. Edward punt. Well, let's see here. Yep, they're going to put it at the 37, 38. 38 would be a 14-yard <sighs> punt, as you said. Well, no, it's actually, let's see here. 24 to the 38. Yep, that's that's about it. About 14 They yards teach punt. math in Minnesota, they do. Mike? Uh, they do. do they? I tell you. Hey, you actually paid attention. Well, he, initially, he was the, the official was standing back at around the 33 <laughs> yard, and they moved it up to the 38. So, I watched the dude uh, mark it on the other side. Oh, okay. Over and on that's the the thing. It's always an adventure in, during high school football <laughs> because, as we know, officials will second guess and they'll, they'll change the spot. So sometimes you see an initial spot and then they change it. And we've got a TV timeout, I think, Mike. 442 yeah. left to play in the first half. And right now it is Cambria Friesland 26, Fall River Rio 7. And Max Raymond has been simply unstoppable in this first half. He has accounted for all four of the Hilltoppers' touchdowns. And now they have a short field, a chance to add to this lead late in the half. An impressive First half indeed for the Hilltoppers. First and 10 from the 38 of Ryle Fulver. Bermania in motion. He takes the handoff. Bermania to the 40. Cut back. Sidesteps a man. 35 to the outside. 30. And he will be taken out of bounds on the near side by Gavin Woodall. But Bermania shifty there on that run as he, he came got to the 11. near side. And that's a first down. Gavin. Woodall came into the game with 31 tackles on the season. That was good for third on the team, and he well, made one there. Cade Bermania has uh, joined the uh, Century Club. He's got an even 100 in And this time they're going to wildcat it. They're wildcatting. They're going to snap it, looks like, right to to Raymond. And Whoa, he will get one out. dropped Ooh. for a big loss. Oh, my, Nick Larson. He wasn't fooled by that at all. The snap. Went directly to Raymond, and Larson wasn't fooled at all. He got in there in a hurry, drops him for a loss back at the 
30-yard line, and that's going to set up second and 13. Four oh two and counting left in the first half. And again, another Wildcat. They snap it directly to Raymond. Left side breaks one tackle. And getting stood up in a pile and then pushed back. Looks like he's going to get two, maybe two. Let's see. Yep. Which would set up a third down and 11 or a short 11 or a long 10. With 335 remaining until intermission. 26 to 7, Hilltoppers right now in front of the Rebels. And it's third and 11 for Cambria Friesland from the 27 of Fall River Rio. Smith under center, back to throw. Oh, he's wide open. And wide open is oh, Owen, but my he goodness. just misfired, did Smith. Oh, my goodness, you're right, Tim. Owen was wide open. That would have been six more right there. As it is, it's fourth down. Now, again, this is four down territory in this this spot here for the Hilltoppers, but, oh, that was mighty close to being six more. Oh, my God, I don't think you and I realize how difficult it is to throw a pass well, especially out there tonight. Especially in these tonight. conditions, yeah. Yeah, the wind is really playing havoc with a football, and, and that's one of those that uh, you're going to take a look at in the film, and you're just going to say, hey, just throw the ball up in the air. Just, you know, I don't care if it's, uh, you know, 35 feet in the air. Just throw it up there. Let them run underneath uh, it. On fourth down, the counter play. They give it to Smits. He breaks the tackle. He's inside the 20. He's to the 15, to the 10, 5, and he is in for the touchdown. 27 yards. A counter play, and Carter Smits is the first player other than Max Raymond to get a touchdown for the Hilltoppers, <laughs> who now lead 32 to 7. Wow. Two rushers already at the century mark for the Hilltoppers. And now Carter Smith on three carries has 44 yards and a score. So, again, two-point conversion try. They got it last time. Smith out of the gun. will hand it to Raymond. And, nope. oh, they faked the hand up there. And they give it to Bermania, and he fumbled the football. So the two-point conversion fails. But it's now 32 to 7. Hilltoppers leading. We're back right after this on DailyDodge.com. Look around. This book, this meal, this land, this world is made of dreams. So when people say American Family Insurance protects things, we shake our head no. Because we protect this, and everyone's dream is worth protecting. Insure carefully, dream fearlessly. American Family Insurance. Yes, I'm a dream. Contact the Kevin Carnine Agency, LLC, at 920-887-9700 in Beaver Dam today. American Family Mutual Insurance Company, SI, and its operating company, 6000 American Parkway, Madison, Wisconsin. Sports injuries, nagging aches and pains. It's frustrating when your mobility is limited, preventing you from enjoying an active life. Beaverdam Community Hospitals Institute for Movement and Orthopedics utilizes the latest surgical solutions to help you live pain-free. Their team of experts, from orthopedic surgeons to physical therapists, are in one location, collaborating to customize a plan that reclaims your quality of life. Learn how they can seamlessly maximize your mobility. Visit bdch.com backslash IMO. <laughs> oh my, oh my, oh my, oh my. And we are back, and as you see on the video screen, sorry there, folks, we didn't realize we were back all of a sudden. And uh, it's... Uh, Boy, it just goes from bad to worse here for Fall River. Rio is on the kickoff. The ball, again, gets past Markward all the way back towards the goal line. And by the time he gets back to retrieve it, he's taken down around the five-yard line. So now the Rebels with a first and ten at their own five. And uh, they trail 32-7 to to Cambria Friesen with 3.05 to go in the first half. And now they start this drive in the shadow of their own goal post. Larson will be ducking under center on this play. Larson will run and keep it. Straight ahead running out across the 10, out near the 15-yard line. Stopped just shy, it looks like. See where they mark it here. Larson got eight. 
pretty decent run, actually. Sights on the stop for the Hilltoppers. Gain of eight, second and two coming up from the 13-yard line. Well, Nick Larson, the only bright spot offensively, he's for 85 yards. On second and two. This is Larson again, and keeping it again, right side, dancing. Out to the 20, maybe the 21. He's got a first down, plenty of extra. And that'll move the chains for the Rebels. Well, the kickoff squad has really injured the uh, the Rebels here in the last couple of times. I mean, when you... Uh, you know, one time you're at the five-yard line, another yep. time you're you're inside the 20, and, uh, you know, you're, you're having tough sledding to begin with, and then you have to start out your drives way back there. It just It's just difficult to get things going. First and 10 for the Rebels from their own 20 after a gain of six, almost seven on that last play. Here is a handoff by Richardson, and not much sledding up the middle that time on the carry was Tegan Proc now. Well, he did get about four, I guess. That initially looked like there'd be a lot less than that, but he was able to snuff four out of that. So second and six coming up from the 24. 90 seconds left in the first half. Richardson surveys the defense and quick toss to the right side, caught by Rowe, breaks the tackle, he's up the sideline to the 30 and then taken down near the 35 yard line. And that was Sites again on the tackle. But uh, he moves Rowe on the reception from Richardson and it's first and 10 for the Rebels from their own 35. Now we're down to 65 seconds and counting left in the half. Rebels are out of timeouts, so unless they get something in a big hurry, Richardson ducks under center. Graham's in motion to the near side. The toss goes to Proc now. Right side, 35, and gets tripped up near the 37. It's going to be a gain of almost two on the play. And second and eight coming up from the 37. And we're down and out of 22 seconds and counting left in the half. And they don't really have to snap it again here. We'll see if they do. The Rebels will get the ball to start the second half, but they've got a lot of ground to make up, trailing 32-7 to seven at this juncture. They will snap it, and they will toss it to Proc now near side. Trying to turn the corner flag on the play. Cut back by Proc now as he dives towards that's, the 38. That's the end of the first half. Yeah, there is a flag down. Let's see what that's all about. But, yeah, likely it's going to be the end of the half as the clock has hit double zeros. He's got to get the signal from our officiating crew. It was orders of play in the books here at Cambria Friesland with the score at halftime. Cambria Friesland 32, Fall River Rio 7. Stay with us. Our halftime report comes up in just a moment. This is the high school football game of the week on DailyDodge.com. With today's busy schedules, you need banking solutions that are available when you need them to be. This is Tara Ninman, Marketing Manager with Farmers and Merchants Union Bank. We understand you want to bank when and where it's most convenient for you. And we've updated many of our digital banking products to make it even easier for you to bank with us. Our redesigned website is easier to view on mobile devices and has a clean, modern look. Our mobile app and online banking platforms have also been updated and include convenience features like mobile device fingerprint login, person-to-person -person payments, optional email and text alert notifications, and transfer of funds from our bank to another bank. Our business banking has also been updated with a new online business banking platform and business mobile app. Check it all out at fmub.bank. Farmers and Merchants Union Bank, Columbus, Fall River, Friesland, Juneau, and Rio. Equal housing lender, member FDIC. Hi, this is Dr. Adam Forster at Columbus Family Dental. 
If you've been unhappy with your smile, it's time that you come and see us. Our team of doctors are waiting to help you get your smile back. We'll take the time to talk with you and treat you like a member of our family, not just another number. Whether it's a whole mouth makeover or simply a little tweak, we'll find the right solution that fits you. For your free, no-pressure consultation, call us today at 623-5559. Air Care in Beaver Dam has been trusted by customers for over 37 years. This is Chad Guzzi, owner of Air Care, and we want to keep you happy and comfortable. From our courteous office staff to the honest and dependable technician in your home, our reliable team is working hard to provide heating and cooling solutions for you. We proudly serve the entire Dodge County area and beyond. Let us create the comfort in your home that you deserve. Call us today at 920-356-8860. Sports injuries, nagging aches and pains. It's frustrating when your mobility is limited, preventing you from enjoying an active life. Beaverdam Community Hospital's Institute for Movement and Orthopedics utilizes the latest surgical solutions to help you live pain-free. Their team of experts, from orthopedic surgeons to physical therapists, are in one location, collaborating to customize a plan that reclaims your quality of life. Learn how they can seamlessly maximize your mobility. Visit bdch.com backslash IMO. Look around. This book, this meal, this land, this world is made of dreams. So when people say American Family Insurance protects things, we shake our head no. Because we protect this, and everyone's dream is worth protecting. Insure carefully, dream fearlessly. American Family Insurance. Yes, I'm a dreamer. Contact the Kevin Carnine Agency, LLC, at 920-887-9700 in Beaver Dam today. American Family Mutual Insurance Company, SI, and its operating company, 6000 American Parkway, Madison, Wisconsin. At Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Beaver Dam, we are a second generation family owned business that has been in the Beaver Dam community for over 25 years. Our goal is to make the process of buying a vehicle fun again. No pressure, no hassle, just quality customer service from our friendly and experienced sales staff. So give us an opportunity the next time you're in the market for a new or pre owned vehicle. The worst that can happen is we shake hands and part as friends, and if you catch us on the right day, you can enjoy one of Mom's amazing homemade cookies. Let our family take care of your family at Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Beaver Dam. Are you looking for that long-term relationship? Are you looking for someone who cares? This is Randy Bubbles, President and CEO of Farmers and Merchants Union Bank. We do care and we strive for that long-term relationship. Banking, that is. Community banking is all about supporting you, as well as the communities we live in. Our team at Farmers and Merchants Union Bank live in the same neighborhoods as you. We drive on the same streets. Our kids share the same schools and play at the same parks. We take your financial needs seriously and help you find a solution, no matter how simple or complex. We know you, you know us, no gimmicks. Just common sense banking with all the technology advances you have come to expect with a twist, someone to talk to. We like long-term relationships and we do care. Farmers and Merchants Union Bank, stop in to see us, Columbus, Fall River, Friesland, Juneau, and Rio. Eco Housing Lender, member FDIC. And we welcome you back to Cambria Friesland High School. Mike Tronson alongside Tim Haldeman. Justin Wilski is our engineer and videographer tonight for our high school football game of the week. And this broadcast, again, brought to you by a lot of fine sponsors. Our video stream sponsor tonight is Farmers and Merchants Union Bank. Tonight's game also brought to you by Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Kevin Carnine, your American Family Insurance Agent. Beaver Dam Community Hospital, Air Care, and Columbus Family Dental. Halftime of this Trailways Small Conference battle. And at the break, Cambria Friesland leads Fall River Ryle by the count of 32-7. to And let's just run down the first half scoring summary for you. And the name you're going to hear a lot of in this summary is Raymond. Cambria Friesland scored a minute and 13 seconds into the game. With 10.47 to go in the first quarter, a five-yard touch held, but it was 6-0 Cambria Friesland before most of the spectators had finished their bratwurst. Then a couple of minutes later, with 7.24 to go in the first quarter, the... Fall River Rio Rebels got on the board with a one-yard touchdown run for Nick Larson. An extra point was good by Christian Perez. That gave 
the Rebels a 7-6 lead. But with 4.44 to go in the first quarter, Cambria Friesland retook the lead. Max Raymond with a 36-yard touchdown run. Two-point conversion failed, but at that point, it was 12-7 Cambria Friesland. That was our score at the end of one. Flip ahead to the second quarter. Eight seconds into the second quarter, it was Max Raymond with his third touchdown of the half. This one a 19-yard run. Two-point conversion failed, but it was 18-7 Hilltoppers. Then with 6.22 to go in the half, Max Raymond scored for the fourth time. A one-yard touchdown plunge. This time the two-point conversion was good to make it 26-7 Cambria Friesland. And then the Hilltoppers, they weren't done. One more touchdown for them with 3.10 to go in the half. It was Carter Smiths on a beautifully executed counterplay. Smiths from 27 yards out. Two-point conversion failed, but it didn't matter because at halftime. It's now 32-7 to in favor of Cambria Friesland. And that last touchdown by Carter Smith, Mike, was on a 4th and 11, if I recall. Yeah, I believe you it know? was, yes. Yeah, and I tell you, um, they've only ran the uh, counter maybe two, maybe three times. But, boy, I'll tell you what, it is enjoyed that particular play. It takes a, uh, a special type of player to run that counter, Mike, and... Uh, Boy, you can tell that he just really is uh, enjoying that particular play. And uh, it, it's a, a play that can, uh, you know, can be stuffed in the backfield for a loss of four or five. Or oftentimes it can be broken for a big one. And uh, a couple of times tonight, uh, Smith says, well, he's got the one for 27 and a touchdown. And he's got, a, got another one uh, here at halftime that he uh, had a nice uh, run as well of... Uh, nine yards early, and then he had an eight-yarder. And the, I think all three of those were on the counter, Mike, if I remember right. I so, believe they were. Yep. Yeah, that, That's so his featured play. I, I gave Carter Smith's uh, individual yep. stats, three carries for a 44. Um, the uh, Hilltoppers with uh, two players already over the 100-yard mark. Uh, Max Raymond with four touchdowns on uh, 15 carries for 109 yards. And uh, Cade Bermania with an even 100 at this moment on just five carries. And, uh, Mike, I mentioned to you when we were uh, off air for just a moment, if uh, Cade Bermania, I don't know what his aspirations are, if he plays uh, football in the, uh, or pardon me, baseball in the springtime or not, but uh, if he doesn't, he's going to be a track star because that boy can pick him up and lay him down, as they say. Uh, now, uh, if you added up all those uh, rushing yards for the Hilltoppers, I've got 23 carries for 200. Didn't go their way was the uh, passing stats, 0 for 3, but very honestly, they really don't need it. The Hilltoppers can just run the football pretty much at will throughout this entire first half. Now the bright spot for the Rebels from uh, Ryle Fall River has been Nick Larson. He has carried the football 13 times for uh, 91 yards. And uh, you take a look at the rest of the team uh, rushing the football. Uh, Richardson from his quarterback position, two carries for minus six. And uh, Tegan Procknell, six carries for six yards. We well, add up those two, you got an even zero. So therefore, total net yards, 91 yards in the ground for the Rebels, one for five through the air on that uh, pass completion of 11 yards to Jordan Rowe from um, Carson Richardson with just over a minute remaining in the first half. So 11 yards through the air for the Rebels. They've got a total net yardage gain of 102. So 102 versus 253. Time of possession, no doubt, is uh, in Cambria Friesland's favor, as one could expect with the score here at halftime at the break, 32-7. to seven. Of course, this is week eight, one more week of the regular season, and uh, this is Cambria Friesland's final home game. So next week, they close out the regular season. They will be on the road at Randolph. They don't have to go very far down the road. About five miles is all, but it'll be Cambria Friesland taking on Randolph next week in a big showdown. Five. They have a non-conference home game next week in Fall River. They will take on Menominee Indian. So this is their final 
conference game of the season. As we said, Cambria Friesland playing for its uh, playoff lives because the Hilltoppers need to win out to get into the postseason. And uh, the, same, the same can be said for the Rebels. Uh, and, again, if they went out, it's not a uh, lock that they make the playoffs, but there is a still a chance that they can get in. But uh, right now they uh, find themselves down 32-7 to at halftime of this one. Our featured game of the week next Friday night, October 18th, takes us to Marquezan, where the Marquezan Hornets will battle the Partyville Bulldogs. And we're looking forward to that game. We'll be on the air at 6.45 with our pregame coverage kickoff at 7 o'clock next week, Friday night, right back here on DailyDodge.com. As I mentioned earlier, my wife and I went out to dinner last night. We ran in to the Marquezan football team at the restaurant, and they were having a wonderful team dinner. Well, is there Ladies and gentlemen, is there Mike Trotz had take it away. Is there I saw it first. Take I it away. I know you did. I, well, go ahead. <laughs> I, I'm not going to steal your All right, right. All right. Uh, for those of you watching the video screen, right, at this very moment in time, uh, Max Raymond, who already has four touchdowns to his credit, he has uh, 15 carries on the ground for 19 yards. He is leading the band in the school song. Mike Raymond, does it, Mike Tronson, does it get any better than that? Come on. Everybody, Everybody loves, loves Raymond. Raymond. We've been saving that one, folks. <laughs> Is there anything he can't do tonight? <laughs> Max Raymond, four touchdowns in the first half, and he directs the pep band, the marching band, at <laughs> Oh, what a thrill. Uh, this is, uh, does he get any better than this, folks? I mean, as far as <laughs> small town football, my goodness. By the way, there were nine young people in uniform, nine of them, I counted them, nine of them in, un in football uniform that uh, entertained the folks here at halftime by their uh, playing their horns and, and uh, marching out there in the band. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that is uh, Americana. You know, they, they can say all they want about Friday Night Lights in Texas, but you show me a Texas player who has scored four touchdowns in the first half and then directs the band in the school song, you're never going to find it. Not a chance. That should go in the Guinness Book of World Records, in my personal opinion. We're going we're gonna to send, uh, send an uh, email to the Guinness Book of World Records and see if that's ever been done before. <laughs> huh? Oh, my goodness. you got to love it. you, you, you got to really love it. you got to love uh, it. Well, I mean, and good for you. I mean, that's and, – and I was thinking about that, too. All those football players that were performing with the marching band there at halftime, um, that's – you know, that hats off to them. I mean – Agreed. You know, for, for doing double duty here. That, that's pretty That's pretty neat. Well, you know, you uh, – I tell you, I don't know if we can top that. I, I don't, I don't we know can't. if we can top that. So you know what we're going to do? We're going to take a break. We're, we're going to take a break. Come on, Justin. Take it away, we'll come partner. back and get you ready for the second half right after this on DailyDodge.com. Are you looking for that long-term relationship? Are you looking for someone who cares? This is Randy Bubbles, President and CEO of Farmers and Merchants Union Bank. We do care and we strive for that long-term relationship. Banking, that is. Community banking is all about supporting you, as well as the communities we live in. Our team at Farmers and Merchants Union Bank live in the same neighborhoods as you, we drive on the same streets, our kids share the same schools and play at the same parks. We take your financial needs seriously and help you find a solution, no matter how simple or complex. We know you, you know us, no gimmicks. Just common sense banking with all the technology advances you have come to expect with a twist, someone to talk to. We like long-term relationships and we do care. Farmers and Merchants Union Bank. Stop in to see us. Columbus, Fall River, Friesland, Juneau, and Ryle. Eco Housing Lender, member FDIC. At Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Beaver Dam, we are a second generation family owned business that has been in the Beaver Dam community for over 25 years. Our goal is to make the process of buying a vehicle fun again. 
No pressure, no hassle, just quality customer service from our friendly and experienced sales staff. So give us an opportunity the next time you're in the market for a new or pre-owned vehicle. The worst that can happen is we shake hands and part as friends. And if you catch us on the right day, you can enjoy one of Mom's amazing homemade cookies. Let our family take care of your family at Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram and Beaver Dam. Look around. This book, this meal, this lamp, this world is made of dreams. So when people say American Family Insurance protects things, we shake our head no. Because we protect this, and everyone's dream is worth protecting. Insure carefully, dream fearlessly. American Family Insurance. Yes, I'm a dreamer. Contact the Kevin Carnine Agency, LLC, at 920-887-9700 in Beaver Dam today. American Family Mutual Insurance Company, SI, and its operating company, 6000 American Parkway, Madison, Wisconsin. Sports injuries, nagging aches and pains. It's frustrating when your mobility is limited, preventing you from enjoying an active life. Beaverdam Community Hospital's Institute for Movement and Orthopedics utilizes the latest surgical solutions to help you live pain-free. Their team of experts, from orthopedic surgeons to physical therapists, are in one location, collaborating to customize a plan that reclaims your quality of life. Learn how they can seamlessly maximize your mobility. Visit bdch.com backslash IMO. Air Care in Beaver Dam has been trusted by customers for over 37 years. This is Chad Guzzi, owner of Air Care, and we want to keep you happy and comfortable. From our courteous office staff to the honest and dependable technician in your home, our reliable team is working hard to provide heating and cooling solutions for you. We proudly serve the entire Dodge County area and beyond. Let us create the comfort in your home that you deserve. Call us today at 920-356-8860. Hi, this is Dr. Adam Forster at Columbus Family Dental. If you've been unhappy with your smile, it's time that you come and see us. Our team of doctors are waiting to help you get your smile back. We'll take the time to talk with you and treat you like a member of our family, not just another number. Whether it's a whole mouth makeover or simply a little tweak, we'll find the right solution that fits you. For your free, no pressure consultation, call us today at 623-5559. With today's busy schedules, you need banking solutions that are available when you need them to be. This is Tara Ninman, Marketing Manager with Farmers and Merchants Union Bank. We understand you want to bank when and where it's most convenient for you, and we've updated many of our digital banking products to make it even easier for you to bank with us. Our redesigned website is easier to view on mobile devices and has a clean, modern look. Our mobile app and online banking platforms have also been updated and include convenience features like mobile device fingerprint login, person-to-person -person payments, optional email and text alert notifications, and transfer of funds from our bank to another bank. Our business banking has also been updated with a new online business banking platform and business mobile app. Check it all out at fmub.bank. Farmers and Merchants Union Bank, Columbus, Fall River, Friesland, Juneau, and Rio. Equal housing lender, member FDIC. Back to get you ready for the start of the second half, and it is 32 to 7. Cambria Friesland leading Fall River, Rio, as we're just minutes away from the start of the third quarter. We uh, talked a lot about what was going on right for Cambria Friesland in that first half. If you're the Rebels, uh, you know, what adjustments do you make here at halftime? Boy, that's a big hole to climb out of. Yeah, well, it's going to be tough. Um, you know, Nick Larson has been the only uh, bright spot of any kind. And, uh, you know, with uh, injuries to some other kids, it's, uh, it's just tough. You know, you're going to have to fight your way through the battle tonight and uh, hope nobody else gets injured and, uh, try to finish off next week on a positive note in a uh, non-conference game and, uh, you know, have yourself a good taste in the mouth for uh, the off season. And, uh, you know, the an awful lot of these kids are going to be uh, participating in um, either wrestling or uh, basketball. And uh, holy smokes, Mike, I just looked at my schedule and I'll be uh, roughing basketball in a matter of two weeks in uh, some junior high stuff here coming up pretty quick. I always enjoy a little junior high action, if you want to call it action. But it is, you know, it's action for those kids. And, and it's city basketball for the most part in the area. And uh, we enjoy doing the uh, the local um, junior high stuff just so we, uh, you know, we don't call a fumble in a, in a basketball game. 
you know. <laughs> you know, you just you, you get your legs right. back a little right. bit, you know, do a little running and, and learn how to blow your whistle again. And uh, eh, it's been a long time. It's been March for uh, for some folks. I, I do a few games in the summertime just to say that I try to stay in shape a little bit. But, uh, you know, I, there's nothing I hate more than uh, – uh, gymnasium in in uh, early July without air conditioning, and I did a few of those this summer. Oh, brother! Whew. Thank heavens the Waterloo is getting themselves a uh, a new gymnasium that's going to have air conditioning because uh, last summer I'll tell you, man. Whew, there's a couple nights there that were really really tough, and we don't do just one game in that summer stuff. You know, you do a half a dozen half a dozen games and. Uh, Goodness gracious! There's uh, you. Uh, there's a lot of bottles of water that lost their demise uh, in yeah. those games. Let me tell you. But uh, yeah, there's there's still lessons to be learned out here in uh, in these games tonight. And the coaching staff has got to stay positive. They will be, and uh, you know they'll teach these kids some lessons, and and uh, they'll take it with them. That's always a good thing. Well, we saw them. <clears throat> Two weeks ago, Tim, when they lost to Johnson Creek, they they got down big in the first half, and they, they actually battled and made a game of it in the second half. Mighty big hole to climb out of here. Uh, you're down by 25 points as you start the third quarter, but we'll see. Um, you know, again, it's uh, Cambria Friesland. Will they, you know, keep their foot on the gas pedal, I guess, is, is the question, because we've seen teams – make things interesting after getting down early in games. It's not out of the realm of possibility, but uh, right now the Hilltoppers definitely in the driver's seat, leading 32-7, to and it will be the Rebels getting the second-half kickoff. So we're just about ready to kick things off on this blustery, cold night as I... Uh, if we think it's blustery up here, I'll tell you, I see the uh, the official right down in front of me here, Mike, with his uh, his shirt blowing in the breeze. And I'll tell you, it takes a good, strong, well, it's 39 degrees. So the wind chill, is that, that thing tell you what the wind chill is? It's it, got to be in the mid-20s. It does not, but yes, it's probably in the 20s. I would I guess, guess in the yep. mid-20s with a 15 to 20 mile. Oh, gosh, goodness gracious. I look across, the trees are just... Uh, really blowing so it's it's a strong 15 plus so it's it's very very cold and the folks down in front of us most of us have hoods on and by the way the band director has gone inside Kobe Smith <laughs> kicks it off and it's fielded right at the 30 yard line by big number 10 Jacob Rowe and he just kind of fell on it so Smith kicks to Rowe Rowe falls on it first and 10 for the Rebels at their own 30 yard line by 25 this is just practice for me, Mike. It's just practice. Because I'm going to go sit out and Camp Randall in the elements tomorrow. So am I. That's right. That's right. <laughs> where are you sitting? I don't know. Oh, you don't know what? I don't uh, know. Where are you at? On the 50? Uh, probably not. In the front no. row. First and 10. Yeah, I got, I'm in the Euchre seats, I'm sure. <laughs> On first and 10, this is Larson under center. Backs in the eye. Larson going to keep it, of course. And breaks a tackle in the backfield and dives across the 35 out to about the 37 yard line tough running that time mason owen on the stop but nick larson as you mentioned tim in your halftime comments really about the only uh, one that's moved the ball with any regularity for the rebels and he gets seven on that play and it'll be second actually yeah I'll call it again a six i guess second and a short i four. gave him seven did you you bet okay well you're you're more yeah, generous than i yeah yeah <laughs> it's second down we know that much Ball at about the 36. This time Richardson under center. Backs in the eye. A couple receivers to the left. The toss. Whoa. High toss. Brock now he is going to get taken down in the backfield. And that's just a great defensive play. They snuffed that one out. Loss of about seven, maybe eight. We had a 22 out there. I don't have a 22 on my. Oh, that's Mason Hughes, correct? Yep, Mason Hughes. There we go. He changed his number, or actually, he, he we wears different numbers. So Mason Hughes on the stop that time, and he held him up enough where it's back around the 30. 
And Richardson back to throw. Ooh. Pressure comes, Ooh. he's sacked. Wow. Sites got in there defensively, so did, well actually, Joey Sites and Ben Sites were both in there. There were three or four red jerseys there in a hurry, and it's fourth and long in a punting situation for the Rebels, so not able to do anything on the second half kickoff. Again, at Cambria defense, they've been just impressive all night long. This is Perez to punt, and he will angle it towards the near side oh, of nice the field. Punt. Very nice punt. Takes a Rebel bounce. Bermania will just get away from it. And then it just dies right around the 24-yard line. But, uh, yeah, definitely a, a nice punt that time for Perez. And actually around the uh, 34. I think I might have said the 24. But uh, 9.49 left to play third quarter. Hilltoppers with the ball back in a 32-7 lead. That was a 43-yard punt. That was Certainly really his good best punt. of the night. Well, it was with the win, but still, it's a good punt. I mean, that uh, that football is like punting a rock. You know, with wind chills in the mid-20s, you really. Oh, we've really got a penalty. We've got, we penalty we got a penalty that's going to be another walk-off against uh, Cambria Friesland here. Another was that a, minus was that 15. Was a, a legal block there? Had to be. It looked like it was. Let's check it out. So, yeah, that's going to push the ball team. So first and 10 for the Hilltoppers from their own 17. 9.49 to go, third quarter. And Toby Smith out of the gun as they motion a man, Bermania. He will hand it off, and who got it? It was... Second guy through, whoever that was. It wasn't Bermania, but he was in motion. Let's see, they uncover the pile. Raymond was the ball carrier. And he got about a yard. Come on, give him one. Second and nine coming up. As they break the huddle, they'll put a couple receivers wide to the near side. Wing back right side is Smith. Now they motion Bermania and... This time he will take the hand up, cut back, gets across the 20, and then gets pushed back. Romania on the carry got pushed back after trying to turn the corner. Osterhaus was out there defensively. So was Dakota Johnson. And it's still a pickup of about two yards to set up a third down and seven. Halftime score was uh, Beaverdam trailing sixth-ranked DeForest, 42-0 back at uh, Derleith Field in Beaverdam tonight. Third and seven. And Smith back to throw. Towards the right side it is caught and bounds. That's a first down. So a completed pass for Smith to Griffin Hart over on that right side of the field. Moves the chains. They're going to mark this. 12-yard gain. At the 33-yard uh, line, yep, so a 12, almost 13 yards on the pickup, and it keeps the drive going. Nice throw and a nice catch. Yeah, as we mentioned, very hard to throw on a night like tonight, but that one was on the money. First and 10, toppers from their own 33, moving right to left, third quarter. Smith under center, pans it off, and coming to the near side, that was... Raymond again, and Max Raymond that time picked up about two to the 35, just shy of the 35, second and eight after the gain of a short two. Clock running as we are now at eight minutes and counting left in the third quarter. Senior night tonight, parents night tonight, brat bash tonight. Homemade cookies. Homemade cookies tonight. I mean, this is the night. Oh, it it is homecoming. See what I tell you, Mike. I didn't know that. All right, so I missed that one. And here is a handoff. Raymond counter the misdirection as they give it to Smith, Ooh. and this time he's going to get snuffed out. That time they were ready for it, and that was Jacob Rowe that snuffed it out and brought him down. He loses a, 
well, about a yard, I guess, and so it's going to set up third down and eight. So it's homecoming to this. They're going to write books about this. I was thinking, you know, uh, Cambria Friesland plays uh, Randolph next week. They do. They call that the Battle of the Windmills because there's a ton of windmills between here and Randolph. You know what I mean? Is that what they call it? Seriously? Well, I'm, no, I, I'm I, just I, wondering. Well, I, I've never heard of that. No, I haven't either, but that's... Smith back to throw on Whoa, third and long. Oh, baby. And it is incomplete as he wanted to go to Owen on the near side of the field. Osterhaus was out there in coverage, and it's going to set up a fourth down and nine. 6.47 remaining in the first half. Now for homecoming, do they do a big dance on Saturday night, uh, I suppose, yeah. Is it? Most schools do that, so I'm being told yes. Anyways, punting situation here. Mason Owen will punt it. We got a whistle, and we got a timeout by Cambria yeah, Friesland. Cambria Friesland. And uh, any idea who won the tug of war? <laughs> yeah. No? Oh, my. Do they no? even do that here? I don't know. I, <laughs> well, they do tug of war everywhere, don't they? Well, I don't know. They did it in Marcus, and we know that. Well, so yeah. It, and we know the freshman girls <laughs> were, were the victors in that. So <laughs> I'm not taking them on either. Uh, no. No siree. The last time I did any kind of tug of war, I was a freshman in college. <laughs> and it was uh, our dorm floor against uh, another dorm floor. We got waxed. <laughs> we got waxed. <laughs> I was in much better shape in those oh, days, but it yeah. uh, didn't matter. Yeah, well, I did some of that when I was in college, too. But that, that was circa was, 1993, that by was, the way. And we took a lot of pride in that stuff. And, uh, of course, I was in the ag fraternity, and we had a bunch of, uh, you know, young fellas that had some <laughs> beef on them. <laughs> All right, Mason Owen back in. Whoa! The snap is way over his head. Going back to the five. He's got to go back and pick it up. Now runs, and he will get tackled at the five-yard line. Oh, my goodness. Even with elevator shoes, he wasn't going to be able to get that snap. And that is a big break for the Rebels now, who are going to have it first and goal at the five-yard line. Now, wow. Now, I'll tell you what, Mike. Uh, this is something that they may chat about during the week and the coaching staff might discuss this that uh, you know tonight it may not be something that would uh, alter the outcome of this game but once you get into the playoffs something of that nature happens what do you do kick the ball out of bounds through the end zone for two points give the team two points and then you get to kick it off you get the to kick it right exactly yeah. so anyways it's first and goal for the rebels richardson under center backs in the eye from the five-yard line, and Richardson, the toss, goes to Larson. Following his blocker, Proc now cuts back, and he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Rebels. Larson with his second touchdown of this game. It goes for five yards, and with 6.34 left in the third, it's now 32-13, to Cambria Friesland. Larson with his second touchdown of the night, and he's now over the... Uh Let's see. So we'll see if that gives the Rebels a little bit of life here because we still have 6.34 to go in the third quarter. All of a sudden, you know, I start feeling a little bit better I've, about I've yourself. seen center snaps go over the uh, head of punters before, but I've never seen one go that high. Two-point conversion try here. Same formation as that last play, and the toss again. To, this is Prochno actually, left side, going for the pylon. He's in for the two-point conversion. 32 to 15 is our score as the Rebels close the gap with 6.34 left in the third. Back after this on DailyDodge.com. Are you looking for that long-term relationship? Are you looking for someone who cares? This is Randy Bubbles, President and CEO of Farmers and Merchants Union Bank. We do care and we strive for that long-term relationship, banking that is. Community banking is all about supporting you, as well as the communities we live in. Our team at Farmers and Merchants Union Bank live in the same neighborhoods as you, we drive on the same streets, our kids share the same schools, and play at the same parks. We take your financial needs seriously and help you find a solution. 
no matter how simple or complex. We know you, you know us. No gimmicks. Just common sense banking with all the technology advances you have come to expect with a twist. Someone to talk to. We like long-term relationships and we do care. Farmers and Merchants Union Bank. Stop in to see us. Columbus, Fall River, Friesland, Juneau, and Rio. Eco Housing Lender, member FDIC. Well, they didn't wait for us to come out of the commercial break. It was an onside kick attempt by the Rebels. Why not? But Cambria Friesland recovers. Oh, folks, you should have seen it. Uh, Cambria Friesland player had the opportunity initially, and then he misfielded it. And uh, his teammate come up and uh, grabbed it on the run, tried to tightrope it down the sideline, and stepped out of bounds just short of midfield. How's that for a wrap-up, Mike? How'd I do? You did yeah? very well. So in case you're ever sick, I could do play-by-play? -play? Yes, you could. All right. Deal. Most people wish you would. First and 10, <laughs> Hilltoppers from the 47. Raymond again, 50, 45. And now he gets stood up near the 41-yard line. Max Raymond right back to work. Now that his marching band duties are finished for the evening, he can concentrate on rushing the football, and he picks up a first down. He got 11. Yes, he did. Approaching the halfway point of the third quarter. Glad you're with us tonight on DailyDodge.com. Mike Tronson, Tim Alderman, Justin Wilski with you from Cambria, Friesland, one of our favorite places to come and do a game. Never dull here. And it's been entertaining tonight. First and ten. Toppers on the Rebel 42-yard line. Out of the gun. They hand it off to Bermania. And he tries to turn the corner on the left side. He can't do it as he's taken down near his own bench. Tegan. And it's, well, no gain no or game. loss. Yep. That's, uh, I think, let's see. Is that the only time tonight that he has been held to no gain? Yep. The only time tonight. No, no. He had a, a minus one back some time ago here. Second and 10, back of the 42-yard line. And this Whoa. is Raymond up the middle. He's to the 20, outside, 15, 10, 5. And he is score number five. Score number five on the evening for Max Raymond. 42-yard touchdown run. And it's now 38 to 15, Cambria Friesland. Boy, it didn't take him to respond after the uh, turnover and the uh, opportunity to score here early in the second half. Minute and 33 seconds yeah, yeah, after the Rebel touchdown, the Hilltoppers answer. <laughs> 42 yards on the run. And now a two-point conversion try. And this time they're going to snuff it out, are the Rebels. Raymond could not get it in. So, 5.01 to go in the third quarter, and it's now 38-15 to 15 in favor of Cambria Friesland. Back after this on DailyDodge.com. Hi, this is Dr. Adam Forster at Columbus Family Dental. If you've been unhappy with your smile, it's time that you come and see us. Our team of doctors are waiting to help you get your smile back. We'll take the time to talk with you and treat you like a member of our family, not just another number. Whether it's a whole mouth makeover or simply a little tweak, we'll find the right solution that fits you. For your free, no pressure consultation, call us today at 623 5559. And with 501 to go in the third quarter, the Hilltoppers have increased the lead once again, Tim Alderman. Yeah, and like you said, Mike, didn't take them very long, and that's a sign of a good team when you, uh, you know, give a team a, a bit of a, a break, um, give them a little breath, and, uh, you know, a team that was, you know, feeling like they were uh, down and out, and all of a sudden you give them an opportunity to uh, come back in the ball game, and then a minute and 33 seconds later, all on the ground once again. There's a good Just kick taken down. at the 20. Yep, to the head to the 25, now left side 30. 
35, and finally tackled after crossing the 40-yard line. Nice run back for Proc now after about the 43. <laughs> So, it'll be first and 10 for the Fall River Rio Rebels from their own 43 with 4.51 to go third quarter. A lot of scoring in this one, 38 to 15. <clears throat> Hilltoppers lead, Rebels driving now. They just scored a few moments ago, but Cambry answered rather quickly. Richardson hands it Ooh. off, and what a defensive play! They hand it off to Proc now, but Joe Seitz said, no, sir, and drops him in the backfield for a loss of one. Joe but he plays his heart out out there. Boy, Let me he tell certainly you, boys, is. He is one tough hombre. <clears throat> that was a great, great play. Second and 11. Back of the 42-yard line. Graham's in motion, now sets. This is Richardson under center with the backs in the eye. Toss to Proc now. He's to the 40, 45, and lunges towards the midfield stripe. So Proc now takes it to about the 49, gain of seven on that play, and it'll be third and three coming up. Under four minutes to play, third period. They'll head up to the line in pretty much that same formation. Backs in the eye, two receivers left. Richardson surveys the defense on this play and tosses to Proc now. This time he goes left side and lunges, and he can't turn the corner the because yard. Joey Seitz was there again. He just continues to get to the football. It's going to be fourth and five. The ball around the 47-yard line. And a fourth and five, and the Rebels appear to be going for it here. But I suppose with, you know, time ticking away, we're down to under 15 minutes left in the game. Being down 38 to 15, what do you have to lose? Fourth and five. For the Rebels from their own 47. Do they try and get him to jump? Let's see. And now a whistle and we have a timeout. We do. So the Rebels call timeout. With 241 remaining in the third quarter. They're going to talk about it here. Maybe draw something up in the sand. It's cold sand, Mike. Well, it would be very cold sand tonight, wouldn't it? <laughs> and wet. <laughs> Just got this score in, Mike, from my roving reporter. As I heard my phone blew up, blow up here, I felt it actually buzzing in my pocket. Lakeside, 35, point at Zippo, the end of three. 35 nothing Lakeside. They've got to win out in order to get in the playoffs. You have a uh, Johnson Creek Lourdes score by any chance? No. That's a, that is the championship game in the conference uh, tonight being played between those two teams. You know, it's funny because you look at the recent history in this conference, you have to go back all the way to 2012 to find out the last, to see, that was the last year that a team other than Cambria, Friesen, or Fall River won this conference. As we have flags flying everywhere on fourth down, it's an illegal procedure. Boy, that, that hurts because that turns a fourth and five. Cambria, Friesland, or Fall River won the conference championship in the Trailway Small Randolph back in 2012. That's how good Cambria, Friesland has been over the years, in recent years. That's how good Fall River was. And granted that they weren't co-oping with Rio until right, this year. But, right. but still, it just tells you the dominance of those programs since 2012. All right, now it's fourth and ten. They're still going to go for it. Richardson under center, two receivers to the right. Richardson back to throw. 
Going to dump it off to the right side. Prockno makes the catch, breaks one tackle. And not the second wave, though, as he will get taken down at the 45. So it's a gain of only three, and the ball is going to go over on downs to the Hilltoppers with 2.31 remaining in period number three. It's still 38-15 to 15 in favor of Cambria Friesland. Randolph had won the conference four years in a row. They tied with Cambria Friesland for first place in 2009. They won it outright in 2010, 2011, and 2012. 2013, Fall River won the conference. 2014, Cambria Friesland. I'll finish that in just a moment. First and 10 for the uh, toppers from the Rebel 45. Smith hands it off to Raymond. 45 to the outside 40. And dives inside the 40 to about the 37. Going to be a gain of about 7, almost 8 on the play. In 2015, Cambria Friesland Conference champs. They won it again in 2016. Fall River won it in 2017 and 2018. So this will be the first time since 2012 that the conference champ will not be small. Second and three officially after a gain of seven. And on this second and short handoff goes to Raymond who stumbles towards the marker. Did he get enough? Needed about nope. three, and I think he he's just yep, a little bit shy of the yard to gain. So it'll be third and a yard for the Hilltoppers. The ball now is at the 36-yard line of the Rebels, and we're down to under 90 seconds remaining third quarter. And it's not getting any warmer, Mike. It is not getting any warmer. It, it, yep. well, but it will in <laughs> April, May. If you, can, Maybe. if you can hold out for a little bit. Here we go on third and one. Oh, boy. And a lot of running room off the left side. This is Max Papp all the way down to the 10 and tackled inside the five-yard line. Finally tackled by Christian Perez. But Papp taking it all the way down inside the five. They're going to mark it at the, at the, two. the two. It's a 34-yard pickup. And first and goal for the Hilltoppers. Max Papp's first carry of the night, and he gets 34. And they're knocking on the door one more time. Already leading this game, 38-15, to 15, and now with a first and goal from the three-yard line. Or the two, I guess you'd say it. And Whoa. the exchange is fumbled, but... It's recovered by the Hilltoppers. That was Papp again. And he fumbled the exchange with Smith, but was able to get the ball back. And that will likely be the couple. last. Yeah, that'll likely be the last play of the quarter as we're down to 12 seconds and counting. They mark it back just inside the five. So it's going to be second and goal from just inside the five when we come back because that's the end of the third quarter with our score, Cambria Friesland 38, Fall River Rio 15. Back for the fourth quarter after this on DailyDodge.com. Air Care and Beaver Dam has been trusted by customers for over 37 years. This is Chad Guzzi, owner of Air Care, and we want to keep you happy and comfortable. From our courteous office staff to the honest and dependable technician in your home, our reliable team is working hard to provide heating and cooling solutions for you. We proudly serve the entire Dodge County area and beyond. Let us create the comfort in your home that you deserve. Call us today at 920-356-8860. And just like that, we are back at Cambria Friesen High School. Tonight's game brought to you by these fine sponsors. Our video stream sponsor is Farmers and Merchants Union Bank. Tonight's game also brought to you by Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Kevin Carnine, your American Family Insurance Agent. Beaver Dam Community Hospital. Air Care and Columbus Family Dental. Fourth quarter getting underway with Cambria Friesland leading Fall River. The Hilltoppers from just inside the five. They hand it to Pat. Oh, my goodness. He is tossed down, picked up and tossed down by Gavin Woodle. Oh, my goodness. Pap, yeah. did he get anything at all in there? Yeah, Let's we're see. Gonna, 
to give him a yard. I'm going to give him a yard. Give him a yard, <clears throat> but it's still third and goal. But my goodness, that was Woodall throwing him down with authority as we start the fourth quarter with a bang. Well, Woodall sort of uh, stood out a couple weeks ago, Mike, in yeah, that he did. game at Johnson with uh, Johnson Creek. Defensively, he was you can tell he's a fine football player. Third and goal for Cambria Friesland from the three-yard line. Couple receivers to the left. Now they motion a man, and Smith bobbled the snap. Now he wants to go back and throw it. Tosses oh, it. Boy. Options to Bermania, <laughs> and Bermania's in trouble as he is going to get tackled back at the 20-yard line. Wow. That is a 17-yard loss, and it's going to set up fourth and goal from the 20-yard line. What pursuit by the defense there of the Rebels. And the Hilltoppers went the wrong way. Well, that just kind of had disaster written all over, over it from the start, Tim, as the snap was uh, fumbled or bobbled by uh, the quarterback, Smith, and then the toss, the option to Bermania, he had nowhere to go. Well, there that were defenders was, all over uh, the That place. was ad-libbing at its absolute worst. It was, worst. exactly. It was what it was. I mean, <laughs> kind of a busted play. Fourth and goal from the 20. Smith wants to throw a pleat. Out of the back of the end zone, Perez was trying to pick it off. and It's incomplete. doesn't matter because the ball is going to go over on downs to the Rebels, and that is a big defensive stand for Ryle Fall River with 10-16 remaining in the ball game. Right now, 38 to 15, Cambria Friesland on top. And it'll be first and 10 for the Rebels from their own 20. Moving right to left here in the fourth quarter tonight. Richardson will go under center. And Richardson looks over that defense, now turns around, hands it off to Proc now. Right side, 25, 30. And tackled around the 31-yard line. Well, Proc now picks up what appears to be a first down. Absolutely. Gain of 11. First and 10 for the Rebels from their own 31-yard line. Just under 10 minutes to play. 23-point lead right now for the Hilltoppers. We have just a delay here to we're gonna tie a shoe. Now we're set to go. First and 10. Richardson gives it up to Larson. Larson straight ahead and he gets pulled back there immediately. Owen, we called his name a lot tonight. Makes the stop. And might have even lost a yard there. So we'll call it second down and 11. Max Raymond with five touchdowns in this game for Cambria Friesland. The toss goes to Proc now. Near side he comes. Breaks a tackle, 40, 45, 50, and he's finally taken down by Mason Hughes, but that's... Biggest uh, gain of the yeah. night for uh, Tegan Prachnow. He got 22 on that carry, so he's now got um, 36 yards gained on the night and 12 carries. <clears throat> the ball now in Cambria Friesland territory at the 47 where it's first and 10 for the Rebels. As Richardson turns around, gives it to Proc now, straight ahead, 45. Gets stood up near the 41 and pushed back. Proc now still a nice run though as he gains five, almost six on the play. We'll call it a gain of six because he's marked at the 41, and it will be second and four. A 20 and counting left in this one. Backs out of that eye once again. The toss to Larson, right side, oh. taken down 
guess who? Joey Seitz. And Joey Seitz has had himself a whale of a ball game tonight on the defensive side. Loss on the play of a couple. Third and about five coming up. I'll tell you, Nick Larson has really been held in check here in the second half. In the second half, he has uh, but four carries for a, a, a total of nine yards. On third and five, Whoops. Richardson stumbles out of the gate, and now he is going to be sacked. Back across midfield, flag uh -oh. comes out at the end of the play. Might have got a face mask there at the end. Murphy, Newbrow guard, was the one to bring him down. He gets the sack, but there is, yep, a flag, and let's see what that's all about. Personal foul, you are correct. Face mask on Cambria Friesland. The locals down below us don't care for the call. <laughs> well, referees usually don't make those kind of calls up. No, right? no. no. So face mask on the Hilltoppers. I have talked uh, many a time to uh, guys that enjoy officiating football, and, and the one thing they always tell me is that uh, the, the penalty has to jump out at you. You know, if you're going to make a call, it has to uh, somebody grabbed a hold of the face mask on that particular play. So that sets up a first and ten for the Rebels now at the 36-yard line of Cambria Friesland. Richardson, quick throw to the right side. It's caught by Austin Blevins. That was a lateral. And Blevins pushed. Well, no, they say he was in bounds because they're keeping the clock going. Well, yeah, he was stopped in bounds. Yeah, he was stopped in bounds, but, the, but he that lost pass was backwards, Mike. That was a was backwards that pass. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It yep. was. I knew it was. It was close. It was mighty close. Loss of one on the play. Yep, second and eleven coming for, up for uh, Blevins. Bag of the thirty-seven. That was Blevins' first catch of the night. Well, we're going to call it a run. Oh, that's true. That's right. You're right. Richardson, the toss to Larson. Larson, halfback option throws. And it is incomplete oh. as Blevins couldn't come up with it. Well, the halfback option, I, I, I like the idea, and they just couldn't connect. Larson trying to get it to Blevins, and Blevins could not make the catch. Third and 11 coming up. Why not? Take everything out of your playbook. No sense... Uh, leaving it in your playbook and uh, having dust on it over the wintertime. Open it up and let her rip. Let her rip, exactly. On third and 11, back to throw Richardson. Screen. Dumps off the screen. Larson at the 35, breaks a tackle, oh, 30. Nice breaks another tackle and then gets taken down near the uh, 25. Boy, There's no way around it. He got it, actually. Yeah, he got 12 yards on that. Wow, that's a heck of a screen pass, and Larson doing the dirty work to keep that drive going for the Rebels as we approach the halfway point of this fourth quarter. 6-12 and counting left in the game. It's 38-15 in favor of Cambria Friesen with the Rebels driving here. First and 10 from the 25-yard line of Cambria Friesland. And the toss goes to Proc now. Left side he goes. Proc now will be taken down for a loss. Boy, Griffin Hart was there. Joey Seitz was there. Cade Bermania was there. You name them, they were there. And it's a loss of about three, almost four on the play. They marked the ball. I'm going to give minus five, at Mike. the 20. Well, no, I guess it's four. Yeah, I'd say about four. Back to I'm the 29. 520 and counting left in the game. Second and 14. Trying to get the personnel set. A couple of receivers to the right. Backs in the eye. One receiver slot to the left, and they toss to Larson. Breaks one tackle. Bounces the outside. No, he throws. It is intercepted. tipped and intercepted, I believe. Bermania with the pick down inside the 10. They were trying to do that same play they did a few minutes ago. 
They were trying to get it to Blevins on the halfback option, but Burmania tipped eight remaining. Well, that's a nice indication right there. He can play both ends of the field. Yes, he that can. That was a really nice play. That kid's got great quickness. What uh, what grade is that young man in, anyway? Burmania is he's a junior. A, he's, he's a, a junior. junior. He's a player. So the ball is back at the seven-yard line where it's first and <clears throat> ten for Cambria Friesland, starting in the shadow of their own goalpost after the interception. Smith will duck under center. And turns around, hands it off to Raymond, and Raymond diving ahead to the 15-yard line. Larson was there to stop him. Pretty nice pickup for Raymond on first down. Picks up seven. And it will be second and three now for the Hilltoppers from their own 14-yard line. 4.35 and counting, and this one, the drama was pretty much out of it fairly early, 38 to 15. Cambria Friesland leads at this juncture. Second and three. Ball just shy of the 15. And it's the Wildcat formation here. And they're going to snap it right to Raymond. Raymond and a little cutback after going to the right, cut back to the left. Got taken down at about the 15. And it's going to set up third down and about here. two. Maybe a little less than that. Entertaining ball game tonight, and uh, a lot of these fans are going to race for the car, and the heaters <laughs> are going to go on in a hurry at the end of this one tonight. Including the broadcasters. The, the, the heaters will be on full <laughs> blast at the end of this one tonight. Third and about two, maybe a little less than that. Ball just across the 15-yard line of the Hilltoppers. And they snap it. Raymond again. And... Uh, Dives towards the 20. He got it. He got it. Yep, needed a couple, and he got at least two, maybe three, as they'll mark it around the 19-yard line. So a gain of close to three, and it's first and 10 for Cambria Friesen. Now with three minutes and change left to go in the ball game, Hilltoppers lead the Rebels 38-15. to On first and 10, snap it to Raymond in the Wildcat. Right side he comes, 20, 25, lowers the shoulder <laughs> and gets pushed down out of bounds by his own bench. Raymond with five, count them, five touchdowns in this game. That was a gain of nine, by the way, on that play. Five touchdowns in the game for Raymond. He directed the marching band at halftime. <laughs> He cooked the bratwurst before the game. <laughs> he baked the cookies during the he week. He baked the cookies during the week. What <laughs> did this guy not do on homecoming 2019? Well, we might be giving him a little bit too much credit there. Right. Yeah. <laughs> on second and one. Smith under center. Full house backfield. And hands it off. Guess who? Raymond dives across the 30. Got a couple more. Two minutes to go as that uh, is another first down. Clock stopped here while they mark the ball and set reset the chains. the chains. Yep. Now it's winding again, and that will just about do it for this one. That will do it. I would kneel because you got 40 seconds in between plays nowadays, and uh, that should do her. So the Hilltoppers keep their playoff hopes alive with a dominating performance tonight at home, their final home game of the season. And on first and ten, they're just taking their time. No need to rush it here. And the give to Bermania off the left side. Oh break boy. attacks 30, 35, Goodbye. 40. He could go 50, 40, 30, 20. He's to the 10, 5, Touchdown, Cambria Friesland. How about a 69-yard touchdown run for Cade Bermania to put the icing on the cake? 70 seconds left, and it's 44-15 Hilltoppers. 
Cade Bermania now seven carries of the night for 171 yards. And uh, his, his buddy out there in black and uh, red tonight, Max Raymond, with 182 short seconds. A minute and 10 seconds remaining in this one. Yeah, and once he uh, broke the uh, initial line of scrimmage, there was no catching that young There's man. nobody there. <clears throat> so now the two-point conversion try for the Hilltoppers. And they go straight ahead on the ground, and do they get in? Yep. Yes! Two-point conversion, trying to see who had the ball, though. It was Mason Hughes, I believe, 22. So the two-point conversion is good. So with a minute 10 left, it's 46 to 15 in favor of the Hilltoppers. Back after this on DailyDodge.com. Sports injuries, nagging aches and pains. It's frustrating when your mobility is limited, preventing you from enjoying an active life. Beaverdam Community Hospital's Institute for Movement and Orthopedics utilizes the latest surgical solutions to help you live pain-free. Their team of experts, from orthopedic surgeons to physical therapists, are in one location, collaborating to customize a plan that reclaims your quality of life. Learn how they can seamlessly maximize your mobility. Visit bdch.com backslash IMO. Well, just 70 seconds left in this one, Tim Haldeman and Cambria Friesen keeping their playoff hopes alive and setting up a big showdown next week at Randolph. Yeah, that's going to be a big one, Mike. And uh, that's Cade Bermania's first score of the night. It's almost hard to believe, but it is. But five. Bermania's thinking, <laughs> we can't let this guy have all the fun, can we? <laughs> Here's an end over end kick. Oh, it's going to go out, going of, out bounds. of bounds. Yep, absolutely near the 30. So the flag comes out, but just 70 seconds left. And hey, if you're if you're Fall River Rio, and we we've talked about we talked about it a couple of weeks ago in our broadcast and mentioned it here earlier tonight. But uh, Cody Schultz and his staff and his players, hey, you know what? Um, they're uh, you know. They're Still, in, let's, let's put it this way. They're in it for the long run. Right, exactly. Right? They're in it yeah. for the long run. Yeah. They're building for the future. Yep. Yep. And you know what? To, to think that they were still playing meaningful football here this late in the season in, in the first year of the co-op, that says a lot about the job that, that these kids have done, the job that Cody and his staff has done, and I think good things certainly will lie ahead here for the Rebels. Uh, but uh, tonight ran into a buzzsaw, and his name was Max Raymond. And... Uh, the Hilltoppers just have uh, not looked back since that quick start. Put a little icing on the cake with a guy by the name of Bermania, and then a little uh, salt and pepper by a guy by the name of Carter Smiths. Smiths. <laughs> First and quite ten. A, quite the trio right there. Rebels have it on their 35. This is a keeper by Richardson as he spins off the right side and gets taken down around the 39-yard line, picked up about four on the play. So it'll set up second and six with just under a minute left. Big showdown next week indeed. It'll be Cambria Friesland at Randolph, and that is going to be a fun one. Get on Cousins in that one? I, huh? I, I, bet, I bet there will be. <laughs> uh, second down, the toss. Out on the right side goes to Larson, breaking tackles, dives towards the stick, and gets out to about the 45, right around the first down marker. 30 seconds left. Clock, now they wind it after it stopped for the, fir the uh, first down. The Larson chains are a little six. slow to move. Yeah, he did. But now 19 seconds remaining, and we'll see if they even snap it one last time or not. Looks like they're going to come up to the line. First and 10, Rebels from their own, uh, we're going to call it the 45. Richardson. Ducks under center, one second left, and they won't nope. get it off in time. And that's the end of the ball game with our final score tonight. Cambria Friesland 46 and Fall River Rio 15. Stay with us. We'll take a break. We'll come back and wrap it up right after this on DailyDodge.com. 
With today's busy schedules, you need banking solutions that are available when you need them to be. This is Tara Ninman, Marketing Manager with Farmers and Merchants Union Bank. We understand you want to bank when and where it's most convenient for you, and we've updated many of our digital banking products to make it even easier for you to bank with us. Our redesigned website is easier to view on mobile devices and has a clean, modern look. Our mobile app and online banking platforms have also been updated and include convenience features like mobile device fingerprint login, person-to-person payments, optional email and text alert notifications, and transfer of funds from our bank to another bank. Our business banking has also been updated with a new online business banking platform and business mobile app. Check it all out at fmub.bank. Farmers and Merchants Union Bank, Columbus, Fall River, Friesland, Juneau, and Rio. Equal housing lender, member FDIC. At Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Beaver Dam, we are a second generation family owned business that has been in the Beaver Dam community for over 25 years. Our goal is to make the process of buying a vehicle fun again. No pressure, no hassle, just quality customer service from our friendly and experienced sales staff. So give us an opportunity the next time you're in the market for a new or pre-owned vehicle. The worst that can happen is we shake hands and part as friends. And if you catch us on the right day, you can enjoy one of Mom's amazing homemade cookies. Let our family take care of your family at Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram and Beaver Dam. Look around. This book, this meal, this lamp, this world is made of dreams. So when people say American Family Insurance protects things, we shake our head no. Because we protect this, and everyone's dream is worth protecting. Insure carefully, dream fearlessly. American Family Insurance. Yes, I'm a dreamer. Contact the Kevin Carnine Agency, LLC, at 920-887-9700 in Beaver Dam today. American Family Mutual Insurance Company, SI, and its operating company, 6000 American Parkway, Madison, Wisconsin. Sports injuries, nagging aches and pains. It's frustrating when your mobility is limited, preventing you from enjoying an active life. Beaverdam Community Hospital's Institute for Movement and Orthopedics utilizes the latest surgical solutions to help you live pain-free. Their team of experts, from orthopedic surgeons to physical therapists, are in one location, collaborating to customize a plan that reclaims your quality of life. Learn how they can seamlessly maximize your mobility. Visit bdch.com backslash IMO. Air Care in Beaver Dam has been trusted by customers for over 37 years. This is Chad Guzzi, owner of Air Care, and we want to keep you happy and comfortable. From our courteous office staff to the honest and dependable technician in your home, our reliable team is working hard to provide heating and cooling solutions for you. We proudly serve the entire Dodge County area and beyond. Let us create the comfort in your home that you deserve. Call us today at 920-356-8860. Hi, this is Dr. Adam Forster at Columbus Family Dental. If you've been unhappy with your smile, it's time that you come and see us. Our team of doctors are waiting to help you get your smile back. We'll take the time to talk with you and treat you like a member of our family, not just another number. Whether it's a whole mouth makeover or simply a little tweak, we'll find the right solution that fits you. For your free, no pressure consultation, call us today at 623-5559. Are you looking for that long-term relationship? Are you looking for someone who cares? This is Randy Bubbles, President and CEO of Farmers and Merchants Union Bank. We do care and we strive for that long-term relationship. Banking, that is. Community banking is all about supporting you, as well as the communities we live in. Our team at Farmers and Merchants Union Bank live in the same neighborhoods as you, we drive on the same streets, our kids share the same schools and play at the same parks. We take your financial needs seriously and help you find a solution, no matter how simple or complex. We know you, you know us, no gimmicks. Just common sense banking with all the technology advances you have come to expect with a twist, someone to talk to. We like long-term relationships and we do care. Farmers and Merchants Union Bank, stop in to see us. Columbus, Fall River, Friesland, Juneau and Rio. Eco Housing Lender, member FDIC. And welcome back to the high school football game of the week here on DailyDodge.com. Final score tonight in the Trailways Small Conference Battle. You just saw it was Cambria Friesland downing Fall River Rio by the count of 46 to 15. And tonight's game. 
Brought to you by Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Kevin Carnine, your American family insurance agent. Beaverdam Community Hospital. Air Care. Columbus Family Dental. And our video stream sponsor tonight, Farmers and Merchants Union Bank. So a 46 to 15 win for the Hilltoppers over the Rebels. With the win, Cambria Friesland improves to 4-4 four four on the year. They're now 2-2 two and two in conference. The Rebels of Fall River Rio dropping to 3-5 and five on the year, 1-4 in conference play. And the celebration is on here on homecoming weekend 2019 as the Hilltoppers impressive. But, of course, the story of the game, if you've been following along, one Max Raymond and Cambria Friesland's Max Raymond tonight with five, count them, five rushing touchdowns in the kicks. Excuse me. It was 32-7, to Cambria Friesland, at uh, halftime. And in the second half, uh, Fall River actually got on the board midway through the third quarter. They, uh, With 6.34 remaining, it was Nick Larson with a five-yard touchdown run. Two-point conversion uh, was good to make it 32-15, to Cambria Friesland. But then the Hilltoppers, a minute and 33 seconds later, respond when Max Raymond scored from 42 yards out. A two-point conversion failed, but it was 38-15 to Cambria Friesland at that point. And then they cap it off with a minute, 10 seconds left in the game. Cade Bermania ripping off a 69-yard touchdown run. Two-point conversion was tacked on to make it 46-15. to That was our final. But Raymond, the story, you know, you heard about the one touchdown that he scored in the third quarter. He scored four times in the first half. He scored the first touchdown of the game. That was a five-yarder. He scored with 4.44 to go in the first quarter, a 36-yarder. He scored eight seconds into the second period on a 19-yard run, and he scored with 6.22 to go in the second quarter on a one-yard run. So in all tonight, five rushing touchdowns for Raymond. He goes for five yards. He goes for 36, 19, 1, and 42. And for those of you that joined us late, he led the band at halftime. Yes, he did. Honest to heaven, he led the, the band at halftime in the school song. He conducted the school song, and he played his heart out out there in the field along with all of his other uh, team. That uh, number 17 in your program, Max Raymond, 28 carries unofficially for 181 yards, and as Mike said, five touchdowns. Cade Bermania. Not far behind. I got him for uh, 171 yards gained on but seven carries. That is quite the average. That's amazing. So team-wise, when you add up uh, Carter Smiths along with uh, Mason Owen, that uh, pardon me, no, Max Pap had a, had three carries tonight. 428 yards. Gain in the ground tonight for the Hilltoppers on 38 carries. One for six through the air for 12 yards. Total net yards gained 440. You compare that with uh, Ryle Fall River Rebels tonight. They were held in check throughout uh, the great majority of this game. 36 carries on the ground for 136 yards. For three for nine through the air for a total of 26. 100 and... Uh, 62 net yards gained unofficially for the Rebels tonight. And credit uh, Nick Larson with uh, a fine performance. Uh, let's see, I've got him 18 carries for 106 yards. So, uh, you know, uh, all in all, it's a, it's a chilly night. But uh, somebody just said as they uh, were filing out here, a great night for football. Yeah, it'd be a great night if you'd add on about 20 degrees. <laughs> My own personal opinion. Wind chills in the mid-20s, come on. We can do better than that this time of year. It's only the uh, 11th of October. This isn't November. It's October, Mike. Help us out. It's going to be a long winter, isn't it? <laughs> well, it's going to be a long we, we hope not. All right? We got a long ways to go in the football well, season. Well, we do. And you and I thing. just got a... Uh, little message today that we might be doing a little state tournament action on uh, one of our sister stations so uh, you and I will be looking forward to that and that's about what six weeks away 
Yeah, Isn't not it? that far because uh, next week is the final yeah. week yeah. of the regular season. That's right. And uh, <laughs> we mentioned that uh, the big showdown uh, five miles to the east of here is going to be Randolph hosting right. Cambria Friesland. Uh, meanwhile, for Fall River Rio, they have a home game. They're back in Fall River next Friday night to close out the season with a non-conference game against Menominee Indian. Now, where are we going to be next week? Well, we know where we're going to be next week. We're going to be in Marquezan, where the Marquezan Hornets will entertain the Partyville Bulldogs in their regular season finales. And that's going to be our high school football game of the week next Friday night, October 18th, with our coverage beginning at 645 and kickoff, as per usual, at 7 o'clock. So, Tim, looking forward to that one. As I mentioned, I got a... uh, chance to uh, see the Marquezan football team last night at their team dinner uh, up in Waupon and uh, they were all pumped uh, they were uh, you know not in but uh, they'll be hosting party but we'll be there next week so it's at Marquezan at Marquezan and uh, just out of curiosity how is Marquezan doing in the standings did they beat Houston that uh, I'm trying to remember what the final score of that game was um, help me out do you know I I can't remember now. <laughs> okay. Well, well, we'll we'll look that up. But check it out, uh, folks. We weren't there, but I know those two were battling it out. I th- I want to say uh, Horicon Houston Ford won the game, but I but I might be mistaken. Okay. There, so, um, but yeah, absolutely, we're going to be have fun next week in uh, Marquezan. But uh, tonight, Cambria Friesen certainly had fun here on its home field, closing out a 46 to 15 win. And hats off to the Hilltoppers on a great effort. Max Raymond, what a show he put on tonight for Fall River Rio. Hey, you know what? Hang in there, guys, because good things are coming down the pike, no doubt about it. Without a doubt. Mike, once again, my pleasure to join you. And looking forward to next week. Looking forward to that one as well. 46-15, to 15, your final tonight. Cambria Friesland downing Fall River Rio. Thanks to all of you for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed it. I want to thank Justin Wilski, our engineer and videographer, for all of his good work, and for my good friend and partner, Tim Haldeman. This is Mike Tronson saying so long from Cambria. Have a pleasant evening. Enjoy your weekation.